Hello everybody and welcome to attempt number two at doing a new episode of Jan's opening clinic because I don't know why because there are opening questions to be answered the format of this show is you guys if you are just 24 premium members pose a question below a news article that we have published the other day announcing this show to come and then I shall go through all these questions and give my very honest, hopefully very condescending opinions. Because mm, I'm considering now, since this is a second take, take, should I redo the speech I just gave? I can't remember much of it. I said something along the lines that I never have a positive reaction to a question. I never think, oh, this is an interesting question. Let me figure out the solution. And I never think, oh, Good news, I already know the solution. I either think, how dare you make me work on your question? This is way too much for this format. Or I think, come on, can't you switch on your own engine and uh, do it yourself? Why, why do you have to ask me for that? Or I think, do you really expect that I'm gonna explain all the plans and options for both sides in this position in the two minute window we have for this question? So my reactions are always positive. That's what makes such a cheerful show and me. Such a joy to be around. Therefore, let's get started. And for simplicity's sake, I'll also re-answer the first question. <laughs> and apologies if you've already seen all this or if you feel like there's a glitch in the matrix. I feel like that all the time. Deja vu's scary, huh? King Muncher is asking, Hi Jan, I play 1e4, around 2100. Plenty of time to practice, etc. Should I learn d4? Is it necessary? If so, should I learn the Catalan or 3 knight f3, 3 knight c3? First of all, what's this around 2100 all about? Give me your exact rating. Secondly, is it necessary to do what? To get to 2200, to 2300, to 2800, to... I don't know, it's not necessary. And there's many guys who had long and prosper chess careers playing exclusively 1e4. I mentioned Vichy Anand, for example, who only added one d4 at a very late stage in his career. So, no, it's not necessary to become a better player. General advice, do whatever you like. If you feel like expanding your horizons and your interest in one d4 openings, it will be beneficial down the stretch. But if you feel like I want to discover more about the Sicilian Knight of, by all means do it. Second part shall learn the Catalan or three Knight f3, Knight c3, both fine. Both main lines, up to you, as long as you stick to main lines. I will never complain. With white, it's about being flexible. It's never about, I'll do this every game and I'll get a tremendous advantage. That's not how chess works. But if you can add the Catalan or the Nimzo or the Queen's Indian or whatever to your white arsenal, it will not be in vain long run. Even if you don't use the lines, it will make you a bad chess player. Um, Nils Rohr is asking, hi Jan, or he's saying, hi Jan, thanks for all the great work you're doing for C24. Thank you, thank you. I have a question on your update video for your white repertoire against the Nimzo in the 4B6 line, specifically. By the way, I have a chessboard, I'll bring it up in a minute. Sometimes I'll read out the whole thing, sometimes I'll say, yeah, yeah, I gotta let switch on a chessboard. And I don't know what I'll do this time. Specifically after D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop B4, Queen C2, B6, E4, C4, stop for following, E4, C5. I guess I should not become a double time rapper. e4, c5, d5, queen e7. You recommend bishop e2 to break the pin connected with relatively classical play. Knight f3, castles, bishop e3, and see what happens. That does sound like me. I want to ask you about an alternative plan. Instead of bishop e2, I want to play knight e2. And plans connected with bishop g4. Um, bishop g4 is not legal. Hmm. But long story short, I'm a pawn to g4. Long story short, you are right, Niels Roh. I had a bit of a look at this. Let me... Can I do this? Boom! High tech. Hmm, not there yet. Almost there. Let me bring up my little board. So d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, queen c2, b6. This is what I like to call the Paco Vallejo variation, which I've wrestled with. <laughs> Over the years, I've played it once or twice myself. I don't really believe it's an equalizer, but it leads to interesting play. c5, d5, queen e7 is the point. And Niels Roh is pointing out that knight e2 is a good move here. 
I I have to agree. It's <clears throat> um, a little counterintuitive for me because I'm normally adverse to like opposite side castles and playing too sharply with white, blah, blah, blah. But it's good. I had a look here, bishop d2, as Niels mentions, bishop g5 good as well. And then intending to castle here. Looks very nice for white. So I stand not corrected, but I'm with you. I believe objectively this might be an even more powerful option than my bishop e2, which should give us a small advantage as well. Mm, at first, you might shy away from my e2 because of bishop a6, but after a3, bishop a5, my computer spits out the y is better in all the lines after bishop to g5. One point is bishop takes c4, e5, and we win a piece. And if black goes all greedy on us, tries to take this pawn, then the white initiative is just overwhelming here after long castles. So I agree with you. Of course, black can probably do better and play more slowly castles. D6. It's not like white is, white is winning, but the position should be very easy to play here on castles. Knight to g3, bishop d3, maybe push g4. All the stuff Niels mentioned is absolutely correct. And hats off to him for pointing that out. That is a very strong line. Hmm. So basically. Thanks for, it's not really a question, it's more a correction. And you're correct. That's why they call it correction. Snosko Borowski, Fide Master, is saying, Hi Jan, it seems the Banco players have started to not take back on a6 to ruin White's castling, right? But just play g6 first, etc. Do you have the refutation in your files? Thanks. I do not. This is a question I believe I get every other opening clinic, but I still don't have the answer to it. Let's go through our options, however. <laughs> D4, knight f6. At this point I will give my usual boring speech that also applies to all the later questions that are about this position. That I'm not really an expert because in 98% of the cases I will play knight f3 here or the move before. I generally avoid these positions, not because I think they're bad for white, I think they're good for white actually. But it always feels like, especially against Benko players, that in practice, sometimes black's life is a little easier, especially if your opponent is lower rated. I'm not much of a fan of giving him these standard patterns. And I prefer doing battle on my own ground. Having said all that, of course, you gotta go here once in a while. Why does a pawn up? So what's not to like? And after b8, g6, knight c3, this is the trend that has rejuvenated the Benko after they got stuck in these bishop a6, e4, bishop f1, king f1 lines that are good for white, or seem to be good for white. And I do not have a refutation of this. Here, I like how Wojtaszek plays. I normally always like how Wojtaszek plays. He starts with bishop e2, not with knight f3. There's one particular reason, and some e5 lines later. Then queen a5, bishop to d2. People normally play d6 against him. Then he goes a7, trying to disrupt black's position a bit by forcing black to go queen takes a7. And here after knight f3, bishop a6, either castles or a4. I would think white is a little better, even though it's a fairly typical Benko situation. And therefore, as I mentioned earlier, even though white might be a little better with perfect play, I never really want to give the black players the pleasure to blitz out there. Knight b7, rook fb8, knight e8, knight c7, and hope for the best sort of strategy. Because, yeah, it feels like he has less margin for error for black sometimes in these positions. But I believe white is a bit better here. There's also, there's some other line that was complicated here. Bishop a6, e5, knight e8, knight f3, d6, when e6 is very unclear. And ed is probably a little better for white, but also not too clear. So, yeah, Benko's still alive. Sorry, man. Whisper73 is saying, Hi Jan, is there any merit to the Dilworth in the open Spanish for black? Stats look pretty good. Thanks and keep up the good work. Ah, that's another thing I can complain about. How am I supposed to know what the Dilworth is? Give me moves, or ideally, can't we add like little chess boards to our posts? That's always good. If you give me the moves and the position, then I know what we're talking about. But I did Google it. I found a lot of what's called Dilbert cartoons, but I think I know what the Dilworth is now which I'm sure is very worthy, still worth, still worthy information for all of us. So let's go there. Let's go, let's go deal worthy. E4, E5, open Spanish. 
Mm, take the pawn. I've not played the open Spanish in my life. Sometimes I dabble with it, but then I start looking and I think, nah, not gonna be able to do it. So my understanding is the main move order to reach this Dil Dilworth would be c3, bishop c5, knight bd2. Practice, I don't know. What what do you guys do? They go here normally, and now we would have to go bishop c5. But here my computer says that y is a bit better after queen e2. So I'm not sure how to reach this position. But after c3, castles, bishop c2. Um, if I go correctly, the dill. Hmm. The dill. We'll just call it the dill. Is knight f2, rook f2, f6. And that seems fine. It's an old line for black. I've seen it around once in a while. I think I even spent some time on it. At some point and yeah I think it's fine oh, I can switch on the engine bar if that doesn't kill my computer let's find out see the computer this is the engine bar computer thinks why is a little better but I think he's wrong it's probably equal takes takes Queen f6 King g1 and this move rook a8 which they all play now black seems all right no after h3, you can even go all funky and go bishop h3, gh, knight e5. If knight takes, queen f2, king h1, rook e5. Black is winning. Therefore, yeah, I think the dill... ...worth mm -hmm. is a good deal. But you won't normally get it, right? After knight b2, bishop c5, as I said, queen e2, or queen e1, or knight takes e4, or look a bit bad for white. Therefore, I'm not sure how relevant it is. That seems like a playable one. Absolute more. What's our boy, Johann Wilhelm Möbius, up to these days? He's asking. e4, oh no, he's asking. Hi, Jan, what do you recommend? For black after e4 c5, knight f3 d6, bishop b5 check, knight d7 c3, knight f6, queen e2 a6, bishop a4. Is it better to play lines with g6, bishop g7, with e5, bishop e7, or with e6, bishop e7? Should I insert b5, bishop c2, or even b5, bishop b7 castle and decide then? Thanks, JWM. That's not his voice. I'm not sure whose voice that was supposed to be. Um, as usual, I do not know the answer. To the question, bishop b5 check, knight d7, very popular these days, since white isn't getting anywhere much with these direct attempts with d4, they are starting to play more slowly, stuff like this, which basically leads to a let's play chess position. I would go b5, grab that space, then yeah, bishop b7, how bad can it be? Mm. And me personally, I'd probably be attracted to playing e5 very quickly, because it reminds me of my Rui Lopez structures. But most strong players, and these strong players, they are often right. They like to play e6 here and keep their options open, as far as I could tell. After d4, probably you don't take here all that quickly either. But instead you go bishop to e7. White is not really prepared to do any business in the center with e5. So typically you get something like this, right? Castles, rook e1, queen c7, knight f1, rook c8. Now we're threatening cd followed by queen c2, so this bishop goes somewhere. And I've seen some games where now they take and go e5. I think this is some Nino Anton game. That looks reasonable, like a reasonable Spanish for black to me. So I'd probably do that. Not exactly this position, but this e6, um, bishop e7 setup. But I believe it might largely be a matter of taste. I'm sure you can play with the direct e5, bishop e7 here as well. And these g6 setups, they sort of make less sense to me because the bishop on g7 doesn't do that much. But I would not be surprised if those were playable too. So mainly it's a let's play chess sort of situation. Not my cup of coffee, to be frank with you. But it looks very playable for me. Question. Super fishy, number 24. Not any super fishy. He's asking, hi Jan. What do you think of the Catalan line? d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, g3, dc, bishop g2, bishop d7, knight e5, bishop c6, knight c6, knight c6, castles, queen d7, e3, rook d8. That's a bad line, but super fishy, because he's not superficial. He anticipated that answer. He says, if you don't think that's a good, that line is good, what do you recommend as a more active way of meeting 
the Catalan compared to the solo bishop e7 lines that you recommended. So you're asking me, what do you recommend instead of the line that you recommend? And do you recommend me to not play the line that I recommend? Did I get that right? Anyway, let's answer the question. Mm, but I already answered the question, right? This line, that line is bad. That's the problem. I'm not trying to spoil everybody's fun. But if you start looking at these, oh my god, bishop d7, bishop c6, that looks like so much fun. If you start looking at these lines, they normally don't work, which is why the Catalan is a good opening. And this one, I think, was recently refuted, or refuted might be strong, put under pressure by, who was it? I believe Rothstein. Sorry, am I doing this wrong? Isn't this the position? Here we are. Rothstein against... I saw some game. One of the Armenians, maybe? Sorry if I get the names wrong, but I saw some Rothstein game where he put pressure. He played Queen C2, targeting this dear pawn. After B5, A4 is good for white, so black went E5, which I think is the idea. But now takes, takes, knight d2, b5, a4, a6, takes, takes, and b3. And black is already in very serious trouble. So, long story short, it's not a playable line. <clears throat> the same applies to long castles here, I think I've talked about this. In some other opening clinic, black is not fast enough. So no, you can't do that. And it's very hard to find an active line against the Catalan. That's why the Catalan is such a pain. Like dc, bishop, g2, a6 is a line I always dabble with. But here after castles, knight c6, e3. It's also very tough. And recently they started playing more dc castles, followed by c5. Which looks fine and looks reasonably active till here. But you gotta be aware that here white can go for dc5, which is an end game, and has a bunch of sharp approaches like knight e5, knight a3, or queen a4. So it's white that gets to choose the line. But probably, if I was forced not to play the line I recommend, I'd probably go for dc followed by c5. Hmm. So sorry to let you down again, super fishy 24. Well, I think we have some more Catalan questions coming. What's more fun than the good old Catalan? Almost feels like it's an independent opening from the other T4 openings these days, isn't it? <clears throat> JDC is saying, Hi Jan, what do you recommend for white after D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, G3, D5, and 7, B6? I... That is a line that has, together with a question that we'll have in a minute, that has been gaining quite a bit of steam recently. People looking for early alternatives. I still stand behind everything I said in my video series on the Catalan that I did, I don't know, 2015 maybe. But good news for us black players is there's some alternatives now and B6 is one of them. The question was what I would recommend for white though and I would recommend following a game I saw recently by Bosjocic. I think when I was doing live commentary on the European Team Championship, he came to show me that game and I made a mental note that this looked like an interesting way to play for an edge. You go bishop g5. The point is after bishop b7, white wins by takes, takes, knight g5. Threatening this and this. So normally they play this move to block the diagonal, takes, takes, and knight e5. Another clever little move, keeping your options open. How to recapture on c4. When, yeah, the computer line goes something like bishop b7, queen c4, c5, and here knight c3. When black has to be precise in order to equalize. He might manage, but it won't be all that much fun. And this is a typical Catalan position that's close-ish to equality, but white has a tiny lead in development, and it could be a little unpleasant for black. So that's what I would currently do. Hmm. Where were we? Ah, oh, yeah, here. Here's more Catalan questions by Portana. Hi, Jan. First of all, thank you for your great content on Chess24. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoy all your opening series and your Bentabilis shows. Thanks, man. 
My question is about the Catalan with black. Get in line. In your series, you give in the main line with queen c2 and 8a4 the move bishop d7. Which is of course the main line. Yep. But some top players like Kramnik and Topalov tested also the move hc5, which is much easier to learn and I think equalizes too. After dc5, bishop c5, we have two moves to consider. Knight b2 and queen c4. After knight b2, we can play b5, and after the normal queen c4 line follows b6, knight 5, rook 7 knight c3, bishop b7, and so on and so forth. And black equalizes. Any thoughts on this line? Thank you for your answer. First of all, yeah, I think that's... That's an interesting move, let's put it on the board so we know what we're talking about. <clears throat> Which in the old days we just dismissed because the thinking was if you go for c5 and leave this cattle and bishop alive, you're not gonna be able to equalize. But the computers have made things a little easier here for black. And yeah, the big revelation being this line you gave that I. After queen c4 with b6, rook a7, bishop b7, black does seem to equalize. However, I do have some questions. Like here, knight e5 I think is an interesting move. I don't understand why they don't play this one very much. Um, now there's no b5 and there's no easy way to get the bishop out. So my computer says something like queen c7, knight c4, knight c6, bishop e3. Then I'd rather be white. Might be possible to equalize here, but still some work to do. So I'm curious why they don't play this. And there's also this line which Anish played once with bishop g5, h6. This was his game. Takes, takes. Knight bd2. Well, once again, black might equalize, my computer says e5. But I'm not sure I'd prefer it over a bishop d7. However, if it does work, especially in these two lines I just mentioned, then it's certainly close. Worth keeping an eye on if you are looking for a more clean cut position than these bishop d7, bishop c6, which lead to slower play. And we need to know a lot there too. I agree with that. Then c5 would certainly make life easier. So I'll keep following it. And you could very well be right. c5 will make black's life in these lines even easier. So thanks for bringing that up. Hmm. What else do we have? Linden saying, good day, Jan. A little bit of a personal question. Ooh. When you were younger, did you use to study openings and lines recommended by Roman Jinchishashvili? And if so, are there any you still play today? Um, no. I literally can't think of a single opening recommended by Roman Jinchishashvili. Um, no, no disrespect meant I just never got in touch with, I don't know, where we publish it, did he write books with his writings or his videos or his recommendations? So, no, I have no idea. I never had any Jinji. Jinji, is that what they call him? Roman Jinchishashvili input. Is it too late to catch up now? Maybe I'll have a look around. Fructus Obedugos is saying, Hi Jan, thank you for your great work. Thank you so much. My question is, in terms of winning chances with less risks, what do you prefer to face? The Italian, the three bishop c5, Gioco Piano, or the three knight f6, two knights defense? Thanks in advance. I, I'm not sure I get the question. Let's do this again. In terms of winning chances with less risks. So you, you mean you want more winning chances but fewer risks? That sounds a little greedy, if I get it right. What do you prefer to face the Italian? So is this, if I'm white, which line I prefer to face in order to generate winning chances without risks? Bishop c5 or knight f6? Sorry, I can't really figure out the question. I can refer you to my new video series where I believe the second, uh, with a black repertoire on the Italian, where I believe the second video is called three knight f6 or three bishop c5 and discusses the pros and cons in greater detail than I will do here. Long story short, after knight f6 you are allowing knight g5 so that makes things a little riskier for black but you have the advantage of not allowing 
for example, this line with C3 and T4. That is a little dub. So, in order to make the game more complicated, Knight F6 can sometimes be a better bet, even though chances are after both you end up with the same position after D3, Bishop C5. But Knight F6 is certainly also riskier. I'm not sure if that answered your question. If it didn't, I do apologize in all in all forms. I'm not sure how you apologize in all forms. Kiran is asking, Hi Jan, is there any video series about the Scotch for Black in the pipeline? Not really, it's a request I get once in a while. Full disclosure, not everything I know about the Scotch I can publish with a clear conscience. So that's a bit of a problem. I'll think if I can come up with some new repertoire against it. But currently, it's not very high on my agenda, to be honest with you. Tactic Genius is saying, Hi Jan, what do you think is the best way to neutralize? Um, d4, knight f6, c4, g6, g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, d5, cd, knight d5, e4, knight p6, knight e2, c5, d5, long, long, long line, but there's something wrong with it. I'll point it out in a minute. e6, castles, e d5, e d5 is a mistake. Hmm... Where's the board? Where the board at? <laughs> what was it? Ah, yeah. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, g3, d5. Out of fashion these days. I'm not quite sure why. Mainly because black is doing fine in all these c6, d5 lines. C6 here, followed by d5. And also in the c5 lines, I guess. And structurally, I always thought this was one of the riskier lines that black can play. Because you get this Grunfeld structure, but you don't have a knight to exchange on c3. So, I never trusted this. But e4 is not what they normally do these days. Normally they play knight f3. So e4, knight b6, knight e2, c5, d5, e6, castles. And I believe you gave e d5 here, which is a very serious mistake. So, don't do that. Because after e d, e d, knight e c3, knight a6... Knight d2, white is much better, because this knight has access to this square and then followed by bishop g5. White will build an initiative very quickly. Therefore, it's important to not take on d5, but instead to start with castles, knight ec3, knight to a6. And here, as far as I know, black is fine. They've tried all kinds of moves, a4, or knight a3, or all kinds of weird-looking moves. But black is supposed to be all right here. It's very important to wait for this half move before taking on d5. Now, after knight d2... You can do other things. You can go knight b4, turning to go here. And as far as I know, black's fine. Mm. By the way, I think I addressed in the beginning one case. And this show, I pretty much only go through the questions that were posed to me in this news article, which we're bringing up here by premium members. So, yeah, give me a fighting chance of answering all or most of them. Therefore, apologies if I don't react to your questions in the chat. But as you can see, I do have my hands full here. Or half. I have one hand full. The other hand is a mouse full. Therefore, I literally have my hands full. Hmm. Ah, sorry, I'm skipping the second part of Tactic Genius's question. Once again, to give me a fighting chance, because those lines were very different. We'll get to it next time. Autograph is saying, Hey Jan, thanks for the excellent chess content here on Chess24. I really appreciate your great work. Thanks, man. Flattery never gets old. I do appreciate all the compliments. Who meets Magnus Carlsen for his world championship of the challengers and why? Thanks in advance. Not technically an opening question. I do know the why it will be because they won the candidates tournament, but who it will be, I do not have a clue. Isn't that what makes it exciting? All these guys can win. Aronian, Karana, Mamed Yarov in form, Grishuk in form, Wesley so solid as ever. Who knows? I don't have any clue. Anything can happen. And I'm stoked to watch the candidate tournaments. Is stoked a word? I think it is. Chess player 007. 
James Bond. He's saying, hi Jan, I start playing the English defense with black. E6, B6 against D4, C4. What could go wrong? Go E6, B6. You are a D4 player. What do you think is the best try to get a small advantage with white? Thanks for answering the question. Um, mm, <laughs> so, what are we talking about? D4, E6, C4, B6? First of all, I'd probably try to mess with you with a move order. If I know this is your repertoire, I'd probably go knight f3. And then after b6, I'd go e4 and say, ha ha, tricked you. But let's say d4, e6, c4, b6. Here, objectively best is to play e4, bishop b7, bishop d3. The problem is you gotta be in the mood for these crazy complications after f5, e, f, bishop, b4 check. Which, as far as I know, are good for white, but they're also hellish. So you have to be in the mood to play these crazy positions after knight f6, c5, or yeah, it's it gets messy very, very quickly. So if I'm not in the mood, which happens frequently, headaches. Um, I might play a move like a3, and I think, yeah, this might be a way to get a small advantage. No bishop b7, knight c3. They mainly play f5, these b6 characters. And now d5, knight f6, how does this go? g3, you go here, I guess, here, here. Stuff like this. I would think white is a little better. Normally, this relationship between those two bishops should favor white a little bit. But I'm not saying this is not playable for black. It's, it's a position. I'd rather have white, but there are certainly... I'm sure there's lots of games and lots of theory attached to it. But this is a way to get a small advantage if you're not in the mood to fight for a big advantage. Hmm, another personal question. Daffy Duck is saying, Hi Jan, I have a personal question. I want to achieve Fide Master this year, but I do not have the opportunity to participate in strong competitions, which usually take place in other cities or countries. Sorry to hear that. I know that practice is very important, and playing chess with a computer cannot greatly improve my level. My peers have the opportunity to travel and progress. How would you advise training to compensate for the lack of practice? Solve more sketches or chess problems? And how did your training with the coach go? Did you have any system? Thanks. Um, I can't really speak from experience. I never felt I had that problem growing up. I'm from Hamburg, which is a big city. So for younger players, there was always plenty of competition. And then after that, yeah, I always felt quite mobile. So I can't really give any particular advice when it comes to that, I do agree that competition is important. Where are you from? Does it give the country? Russia. I don't know the Russian chess scene. I'm guessing there's plenty of tournaments, even in your area, but I'm not sure. Um, so, I don't know. Play on the internet? That's one thing we didn't have when I was young. So I can't really tell, like, I'm addicted to playing Bullet and Blitz games. Those don't help your your level, but I'm sure there's more serious ways to play on the, on the internet too. Which I agree, that it's not the same as playing over the board in a real competition for rating and so on. But yeah, find a way to travel or to have tournaments in your city. Organize them. I, I've never organized anything in my life, so this is very phony advice. But it's very hard to compensate for that in my opinion or I wouldn't know how to do it then again if you like chess knock yourself out just study and the opportunity might show up to play more then you'll be ready as for what to study I always think it doesn't matter as long as you're interested in chess it doesn't matter if you solve chess problems or look at openings or videos or read books I never really had a ch chess coach so I can't say how the training with the coach went I yeah I just did stuff, yeah, but I wanted to beat the other kids, and they were around, so that helped. And I'm sorry I can't really help you out there, Daffy Duck. Joao S is saying, Hi Jan, good to see you're doing another opening clinic. My question is about the Tarot opening, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight, c3, c5. Do you think there's anything fundamentally wrong with it? Eh, isolated pawn. It's not played anymore at top level, though great champions of the past like Kasparov and Spassky were successful with it. I'm successful, we could argue about, but I'm aware Kasparov played it on his run through the candidates tournament. These days they go for the semi-tarash when the knight, not the pawn, takes on d5. I have seen that. 
Do you think the potential weak pawn on d5 is too much of a liability for the elite players to include Tariff in the repertoire, or it's just a matter of chess fashion and could be popular again if, let's say, Carlson or Nakamura start playing it? I also read that one of the reasons why the opening was out of business was the variation 6d takes c5 after yep. Do you think black is in trouble there? What's, in your opinion, the most annoying system that black players can face? Thanks for your answer. P.S. You were right, I'm Portuguese indeed, but living in the UK. We played Banter Blitz the other day. I played the Scotch Gambit and you crushed me. You're welcome, Joao. Mm, I'm so ignorant. Is it a problem to be Portuguese after Brexit living in the UK? Does that affect you? I should know more what's going on in the world. Anyway, I know a little bit about what's going on in the Tarash. Not that much. To answer the first part of your question, I don't really expect the Tarash to make a comeback. It's not a losing opening, but the upside is not very big. The one line you mentioned after this, this, Black is pretty much forced to go d4, knight a4, and go for this position, where you're fighting for a draw against the two bishops with very little to show for these two bishops. It's not losing, I'm sure, with perfect play. Black can hold this position, but it's not exactly fun to get out of the opening either, and I don't think black can necessarily do better against this d takes c5 line. So that's a big new trend. The other one is, yeah, this I wouldn't be surprised if someone started championing it. These positions, I've always believed white should be a little better after d takes c5, but that one could argue about. It's much harder to play with black, because you really have to be extremely precise to navigate the isolated queen's pawn when you don't ha have any particular attack for it. And the 6 dc5 is annoying. So I don't think it's been refuted, but 6 dc5 is sort of a cheerless fight for a draw, which most modern top players I don't think want to do. Mm. Kiftier. Is wondering, hello Jan. After e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd, knight d4, g6. Oh, I think this is a trend starting here. Let me put on the question. Hmm, because I feel like you guys got together and you said, okay, Jan is slowly losing it. How can we push him over the edge? And then you figure out the system. Now let's all ask questions about the accelerated dragon. We know he doesn't play e4, he doesn't play the Sicilian, he thinks all Marochi structures are good for white. So let's all ask for advice with black in the Accelerated Dragon. That will finally make him lose his mind. Um, Alright, let's let's get into it. Gift here. After e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd, knight e4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, bishop c4, castles, bishop b3. Why is a5, a3, knight g4 more popular than knight g4 directly, without a5? Seems to me that after a5, black gives up the b5 square for free. Also, what are some plans for black in the position after the immediate and delayed knight g4? And should black advance his e and d pawns? Thank you very much. Regards, Ritvik. Let's give to your backwards. And I do have the answer to your question. After a5, a3, the pawn from a2 can no longer capture on b3. And that's a much bigger deal than the weakness of the, what's it called, the, B, the c5, b5 square. So how do we get here, bishop c4, bishop b3, a5. The problem is a3 is not the best move. The problem is castles is better for white here. I think we'll probably have questions about that later, but castles a4, I think knight a4. This is supposed to be just suffering for black. Therefore a5 is not really what they do. But after a3, the point is now knight g4 is good, because after queen g4, knight d4. White plays queen d1, which he would do, in the position without pawns, with pawns on a7 and a2. Then after knight b3, a takes b3 is no longer legal, and that's a big deal. The white has to capture out of the center here. Here after d6, black's just fine. Well, if you do this thing without a5, a3, if you go here, <laughs> here, now take, now you're worse. Because white has more control of the center, this is a liability, bishop d4 is coming. Therefore, yeah, I'm never a big fan of speaking about plans in general. This position you should avoid. The one after a5, if you are lucky enough that your opponent plays a3, then by all means go knight g4. 
but I doubt you will run into A3 much because after castles, Y is much better. Or much better is a bit much, but Y is better. Hmm. So, Zimba7 is saying, Hi Jan, thanks for all the broadcasts and series you've made on Chess24. They're all great, especially the series with Yusupov and Voretsky, where you're just sitting there and Yusupov and Voretsky do the heavy lifting. No, that part I added, but I do agree. And great news, I th I'm not sure how official it is, but reasonably official. Artur Yusupov is coming back this very month and will record something new. I'm very much looking forward to that because I love working with Artur, being around Artur because he's such a nice guy. And I also learned a lot from this prophylactic thinking series we did last time. So I'm looking forward to that one very much. And... Zimba7 saying, I have a question about Schellingford's line in his series about the Karakan. How to mate the 4 bishop f5, 12 bishop e7, king b1, queen b7. I'm guessing it means queen b6 line. Thanks for doing all this stuff. So basically you're saying, I watched Schellingford's series and he recommends this line. And now please recommend me something against his recommendation. Is that your question? Mm, long story short, I believe that line is fine for black. I've always thought, and I've mentioned this plenty, that theoretically the big test against the Karakan has to be 3 e5. Or to a lesser extent, I've always had a soft spot for knight c3 followed by knight f3. But these old lines, they always seem to me like black, or for a while seem to me like black should be doing alright. And what we're talking about here is this one, right? King b1, queen b6. Not the only move, the sharp lines with the castle should be fine as well. Oh yeah, I think that's fine for black. What do they do? Knight e4, you go rook d8, right? <clears throat> I, I have some old analysis on g4 here, but the computer, I believe, says that both c5 and knight takes g4 hold. So, I have to admit I haven't watched Shelling Fort series. I don't know the details, but as far as I know, this position is fine for black. Rook h1, castles. This is another line, right? Takes rook e7, queen d8, and so on. This position, yeah, it's tricky to play. The computer keeps yelling 0-0 zero, zero here as well. So, no. I think that's fine. Go 3-5 e against the Kuroka. Where were we? JKL22 is saying question by destroy 1305. I'm confused. Ah, JKL Stephanie probably he found a memo question somewhere. Anyway, hi Jan, how do you think white should fight against the Benoni, against d4, knight f6, c4, c5? Um, am I allowed to go 3, knight f3 or no? I think we're talking one Benoni, right? What do you think about the following line? D4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, d6, knight c3, e6, e4. Sorry, e, d, c, d, g6, f4, bishop, g7. Should be 5 check, knight f, d7, bishop, e2. Thanks in advance. Um, yeah, the general thinking on these Grandmaster AA meetings is normally that after knight c3 one really shouldn't go c5 here because after or well you can also start with let's say here if white hasn't committed to knight f3 yet that these positions I think this is the move order you gave sorry if I got the move order wrong but that these positions give white too many options one option I really like is to play knight e2 here followed by knight g3 and which is similar to the same ish, but white has not played the move f3 yet. So I think this is an excellent system for white. Well, credit goes to Peter Heine Nielsen, who introduced me to the system. Knight e2, knight g3, go bishop e2, short castles, bishop g5, or bishop e3. Only play f3 when you really need to. And yeah, I think white is better there. Always go a6 after a4. The one you're asking about, I never really dabbled much with this whatever they call this, four pawn attack transposition, but it's supposed to be better for white too, right? f4, bishop g7, bishop b5 check. I don't know what the status is on these knight bd7, e5 lines. That would have to be checked. I haven't checked for a while. Black has to go knight ft7, I guess. White is a little better. 
But I normally don't like this f4 because I have to justify it in order not to overextend. You're asking about bishop e2. I would probably put this bishop here if I had this position. So, don't know. Bishop e2 looks odd to me. But I guess it's also a bit bad for white. Go knight f3 castles. I would if I had to play this. Probably go bishop d3. That's not my favorite line in the carol. And if you want to play this, you have to be sure that knight b7 e5 business works for white, which I don't know, honestly. Hmm. Where's the question? The question is, what is the question? Frank Steinbeckers, candidate master, CM. Frank Steinbeckers is asking, what is, in your opinion, dangerous versus the Rui Lopez? Or as a black player, which variation don't you like to fight with? This is another question that is worded in a way that might make my brain explode. I'm not smart enough to understand that question. So the Rui Lopez, I think we can agree on is e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. So your question is, what is dangerous versus the Rui Lopez? That means a system to play with black that is dangerous for the white player, right? Um, I don't know. I'm on record as being almost a lifelong martial player as, at this point. So I would say that's pretty dangerous versus the Rui Lopez. Mm. But of course it can be avoided by playing 63 or one of the many other sidelines. But this is still my bread and butter. The Marshal. I've also dabbled in another dangerous system with b5, bishop b3, bishop to c5, eh, whatever it's called, Yurtayev, Arkhangelsk. So those are my systems. The Berlin, I'm not sure if dangerous is the word to describe it, but of course it's also an excellent opening. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. As a black player, which variation don't you like to fight with? So I don't know what you're asking. I don't get it. In the lines I'm playing in the Rui Lopez, what I don't like. Mm -hmm. Here I don't like the main lines, a4, c3, d4, and so on and so forth. And in the Marshall, well, in the Marshall, I think after c3, d5, black is fine. So I'm typically more concerned about, um, where is it? Hmm, <clears throat> sorry. Ways to avoid it, like h3. Or a4 here. But I don't think those are necessarily more dangerous. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I got the question right, but I hope I answered something. Thanks, Frank Steinbeckers. Hmm. Inge Zanstad Skrondal is saying, Hi Jan, love your work. Thank you so much. I have a question on the accelerated dragon. Here we go again. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bam, 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 bishop c4, castles, bishop b3. Now a5, castles, a4, feel somewhat dubious for black. I agree. And nine, knight takes d4, and nine, bishop to d7. Nine? Seems to give. Ah, oh, that's after d6, I'm guessing. Seems to give white a slightly easier game. What do you think of alternatives such as d5 or rook e8? Shall we all switch to the marshal? Or the Berlin? I believe the, the marshal. The Nidorf is also there. You can always switch to the Nidorf if you don't want to change your first move. Even the time Manoff is, uh, is a line. But today is Accelerated Dragon Day, so let's go through, through our options. By the way, just generally speaking, I would never go for or I would never, as an exaggeration, I used to do this, but I would typically not go for this position after 3d4 takes, takes, g6, because c4 would scare me. I'm, I'm not a fan of Morachi positions with black, but after knight c3 already, now we can go g6 and transpose to accelerated dragons. Here I have a little more sympathy for black's cause, so I believe these positions do have some merit in the repertoire, but I wouldn't go for them in this move order. Anyway, I don't have an answer to your question, as usual. D5 is sort of the latest trend, but it seems like white is a bit better. Now there was this game. MVL against Gelfand takes knight a5, castles, knight b3, knight b3, b6. 
Tending to slowly reclaim this pawn, but d6 gives black fairly unpleasant choice. Queen d6 is a slightly worse endgame, and e6 is not guaranteed to equalize either. This is what Galfan played in his second attempt against his line, this e6, but he had to suffer against MVL. Hmm. So d5 looks like the surprise moment is gone, and black needs an idea. This rook e8 I've never looked at very seriously. It looks weird. Um, I think the point after f3 is to go e6. Now there were some strange games with where white now went f4. Now that black committed to e6. Got a bit of an edge. Um, but I lack expertise. In the rookie, but it's such a dumb move or such an odd looking move. I'm sure it has a deep point, but I don't expect it to stick around. So, yeah, if I had to go for this position, I probably played this d6, <laughs> bishop d7 business. And now we can either transpose to mainline dragons, which are of course very scary, or go for this, which I believe is what Gelfan has been doing recently as well. Takes b5 when well, it might have a little something after knight d5. But I am not 100% sure it's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get to the next question. Which one is the next question? Thrawn saying, Hi Jan, as always, many thanks for your great work. Thank you, thank you. I have a question regarding the knight orf. After e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c, d, knight e4, knight f6, knight c3, a6, I like to play bishop e2, and I like the stuff that is arising after 6, e5. But what do you think is the most promising setup for white after 6, e6? No idea. Should I as white try to prevent b5 via a4 or allow it? Should I play f4? And if yes, should I place my bishop later on f3 or d3? Do you know some games that I should take a look at? Thanks in advance. Oh, this is too general a question for me, Thrawn. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to let you down. I also don't really know the answer to any of those things because it's such a wide playing field. There are no um, rights or wrongs if you should play a4 or not. There's just lots of different lines. Mm. E6 recently hasn't been as popular as it used to be. I've even seen some guys now start playing bishop e3, f3, g4, which in the old days we would say is very silly with a bishop on e2. But since people do believe in that setup so much, they've started doing it even here. I grew up with this very classical stuff like bishop castles a4, castles f4, knight c6, bishop e3, tier either rook e8 or bishop d7 or rook b8. When, once again, there's no rules of thumb where to put the bishop and so on and so forth. But there's plenty of games here, which I'm sure you can find out by any database search if you want to play it classically. There's also the line, I don't even know move orders, how do they do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know anything. That's the truth. How do you get this line with queen e1? Is that here? This stuff, right? I'm not sure about the move order. There's lines like that, which I still see played occasionally nowadays. Bishop b7, bishop d3. Black chooses between bishop c6, rook d8, rook c8, and so on. Here white, I believe, has a, some chances for an opening advantage as well. But I'm not much into it. So you have to make up your own mind. Nothing is bad per se. Sorry, I can't give you a direct line there. But this position here. Yeah. Still too full of options for both sides. Hmm. Martin K is saying, Hi Jan, could you explain shortly the subtleties of the Queen's Gambit accepted? Very shortly. 
tried to get that pawn back. They just took it. And also that's a bit of an oxymoron, right? Shortly explain the subtleties. The basics you can maybe explain shortly, but the subtleties probably need some time. In the car variations with knight f3, e3, for example, why is it considered to be bad for white to place his knight on c3 instead of d2? Thanks. That's not the case. But I guess what you're referring to is... Um, this line... Where... It's not really that you want to put the knight on d2 and not on c3. But the point is if white puts his knight here too quickly, then in all these positions after b5, whatever, bishop to b3 or to d3, bishop b7, this knight can be a little misplaced because it later can be kicked by b4. Therefore playing a4 here is never very appealing. And it's hard for white to get any type of opening advantage. So I can't really explain all the subtleties because it really, everything depends on white's next move. If you go bishop b3, we'll probably get some very complicated position with a board full of pieces. If we go dc5, we'll most likely get an end game with a board not full of pieces, where white is trying to slowly use these tiny weaknesses on the black queen side. If you go b3, we might get either of those things. If you go queen e2, we'll probably also get a sharp middle game, and so on and so forth. This can lead to all kinds of positions. Generally, black has to be willing to defend these endgames where he's sometimes slightly worse, and he has to be willing to play positions with an isolated pawn on d4 for white. If he's willing to do those things, he could do worse than playing the queen's gambit, except it. A lot of strong players are playing it. Even nowadays, Fabiana Carana pretty much sticks to it more often than one would think. Chess Beauty is saying, hey Jan! Thanks for all the wonderful video series, Banter Blitzes, Banter Blitz and Broadcast. Thank you, thank you. I play the four knights. Um, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop b5. Quite regularly, and I have an excellent score. Humble brag. Could you please reveal which line poses white difficult problems? Um, why do you want to know? You're playing it with white, no? You have an excellent score. Why do you want to face difficult problems. I'm confused. Anyway, the... what do they call this? The Spanish Four Knights. For me, it's always been less of a headache than the Scottish Four Knights. The Scottish Four Knights. Move d4 here really makes play very dry. But after bishop b5, black can choose. If you're up for a theory battle and you feel your opponent is ambitious, knight d4 is fine. This leads to very sharp play. After bishop c4, bishop c5, or bishop a4, bishop c5, where black is fine in all the lines, but you have to know a lot of stuff. Drawback practically is a white can more or less force an equal dull position by taking going e5. If you want to keep peace on the board, just play chess. You can go bishop d6, which I think is all right. And bishop b4, as far as I know, has also not been refuted. So I don't know what your definition of difficult problems is. But objectively, the most difficult problem would be to get an advantage after knight d4. Some would even say it's impossible. Other than that, yeah, by all means, if you have a good score and enjoy it, stick to it. Far away from hell is wrote as a little essay. 5,000 words from far away from hell here. Hi Jan, recently I faced a, in my opinion, clever move order in the Benoni with white. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, c5, d5, a6. Question mark, exclamation mark, which means dubious move. So then it can't be that clever, can it? Normally I go for the bishop b5 and f4 line. That's hard to do after you played three knight f3, isn't it? Or on the more quiet approach with knight f3, knight c3, and bishop f4, gotcha against the Benoni. So I started to think in which line my opponent would try to try to catch me. So I was not sure about knight c3, b5, c, b, e, d, knight d5, knight d5, a, b, and I checked the line with the computer. Yes, it's just nothing. Also knight c3, b5, e4, b4, e5. I didn't like during the game because I thought it's not so clever to go for a line I never saw before. My opponent is probably prepared against. I don't think he is. Next option was bishop f4 or bishop g5, but I refused to go for that too, because I actually have no idea about the Bloomfield Gambit. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, c5, d5, b5. 
I'm not sure I'm following. His pawn is already on a6, right? Mm. So I went for a4 and tried to get a normal version of the Benoni, but my opponent went for an old Indian structure. The game went on like a4, d6, knight c3, e5, e4, bishop e7, g3, but knight b7, bishop g2, knight of 8, a5, and I got a very good position a few moves later. At home I checked the move with the computer and I think black could go for a5 himself between move 7 and 10, move 10. Then the queen side will be close forever and with possible play on the king side, I can't imagine. White is really better there. 7a5 with white, I'm not so sure because of bishop f5. So I go back to move 5 and I'm not sure if a4 is a good move at all. So my question, ah, there's a question. So my question is, what do you think if I should play against 4a6 in a specific move order to not get into an old Indian structure with a completely closed queen side? At the moment, I guess I should look for something against the Blumenfeld and go for 5 bishop f4 or 5 bishop g5. Thank you for your work. Oof, this was a long journey into the thoughts of far away from hell. Let's see if I followed. d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, knight of 3, c5, d5, a6. So first, objectively, you should go for knight c3, b5, e4, b4, e5. If black wants to mess around with a6, waste too much time in the opening, often you gotta go for central play. Punish them. And this, I briefly asked my computer, this is already seriously better for white. So this is the way to go. Um, secondly, if in doubt in all of these a6 positions, a4 can never be too bad a move. And even if you get something like this, well, white should be better here. I understand the queen side is locked, traditionally white plays on the queen side, but white also has a space advantage which he can use to transfer guys to the king side later on. You have access to this b5 square. Typically, black is not very happy to lock up the queen side with a5 completely. I'm not sure how I would play, probably g3, bishop g2, castles, and then eventually some knight h4, f4 business. But I'm saying it's not something to be too afraid of that the queen side gets locked down like that. Mm -hmm. Still, I understand, I'm also not sure how happy I'd be to play it. So, yeah, for next time, go knight c3, b5, e4, b4, e5. Crush them. Um, thanks, far away from hell. Mm -hmm. Smashing lad or smash in glad. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but I'm gonna go with smashing lad. Hi Jan, as a player of various non e4 first moves myself, what's your view of the old Indian when it appears on over the board? Just great, slight advantage for free. Any way of playing for white in particular that you feel gives him a low risk edge? Thanks as ever. Um, I literally, I don't think I've ever faced the, I also don't know, what is the old Indian? Do you say the old Indian? Yeah, old Indian. I'm so bad with opening names. Which one is that? Old Indian is not, is not this, right? This is whatever they call it. Check Benoni, this structure we just had. So old Indian, I'm guessing is d6, knight bd7, and then e5. Is this the old Indian? Yeah, I don't think this is something to be very concerned about. This knight is committed to d7. Both the king's Indians and the old Indians with bishop e7 here should be bad for white. I don't really know theory, I have to admit. I recently I had a rapid game. Somebody played something like this against me. Can't remember though. I honestly can't remember. Was something like this maybe? Did I go d5 now? I'm not being facetious. I cannot remember. But I think something like this is a theoretical line. b5, b4. Um, yeah, I think white is always better here. Extra space. Bishop on e7. So I like those better than these king's Indian positions where I'm more concerned about getting checkmated. See, it's very hard to get checkmated. And you're normally a little better. I'm not sure if bishop e3 is the best move. I'm sure there's other setups, queen c2, d1. But no one ever plays the old Indian, right? And for good reason, you're just worse. Germany, Lutz Espich was the only player who liked to play the old Indian with the black pieces. But I haven't encountered anybody else for a long time. Hmm. 
<laughs> formless. Fidemaster Formless is asking, Hi Jan, how can black equalize after c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, e4, d5, e5, d4, e, f, d, c, b, c, queen f6, knight f3, e5, bishop d3. Monsesian Knightage 2013 is the closest I've found to equality, but the prospect of being a pawn down in an endgame is kind of grim. What would you recommend? 75 is wrong. Mm. How was that? By the way, why am I not taller? Ah, I'm taller here than here. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I wasn't taller. How do we get here? It's e5, yeah? e5, d4, takes, 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 queen f6, and knight f3. Yeah, as I said, e5 is wrong. After that, I'm with you. This bishop d3 is a little unpleasant. But there's two moves that are all right here. Knight c6, one of them. Then after d4, you transpose to this line with e5, which I think is supposed to be okay. And if they go bishop d3 now, you can play knight e5, which looks reasonably equal. What I would probably do is play b6. I think that's a good line. b6, bishop b7. D4, bishop b7, bishop d3, it's a point. You gotta go h6. Yeah, this setup. As far as I know, it's quite solid for black. Hope that answers your question. Morato 1985 is 32 years old. Probably. Might be 33, but that's very unlikely. He's saying, hi, yeah, what can you recommend against d4, knight f3, I'm guessing d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, b5, cb, a6, b6, e6, knight c3, ed, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, knight c6, e4, or knight f3, followed by knight e5, c, o, e. Thanks for your work. Thank for you. And I don't know much about that. <coughs> Sorry. Much about that line either. The Benko with this B6 business. Um, um, um. Here, here, here. <laughs> Oops, sorry. By the way, my engine is not. It's not working, which is probably for the better. We don't really need it, but don't get confused by this bar. It's not telling us anything. Maybe to make that clear, I should cut it out. Can I cut it out? Let me try. Design Jan. Mm -hmm. Bar is gone, but my arm is gone now too. That means maybe I can make myself bigger. Finally, more space for me. Um, so we're talking about this line. Knight d5, queen d5, knight c6, e4, bishop e7. I think they transpose into each other, knight f3 or e4, right? You always get this, black spends a tempo on rook b8 at some point. How do you do this? On knight f3, you also go rook b8, right? And knight e5 doesn't, doesn't work because of queen f6. So here you gotta go e4, bishop e7, bishop c4. Or stuff like this. Bishop d2, rook b6, and I believe castles was a smart move here, because bishop c3, knight b4 was trouble. So you go castles, and yeah, white is slightly better, no? I think there was no real time to take here. White gets too active, so they play d6. You go here, and something like bishop f6, rook fd1, with quite some pressure, should end peacefully. But mm, it's a little more pleasant to play with white. Most experts, I think they go for just g6, bishop g7 here. No, they don't mess with this e6 line. So I hope that answers your question. Now we're having tech issues. I'm reading some mm, stuff is lagging.
Manu G95 is saying, Dear Jan, thank you for your very interesting videos about the Vienna opening. You are very welcome. I have a question about the e3 bishop c4 line. After 7 bishop b3, you recommend for white bishop b7, castle c5, e4, which seems quite natural. But this option 9 e4 seems wrong. It is not played a lot in the database for white in the line 7 bishop d3. For example, 7 bishop d3, bishop b7, castle c5, e4. Um, I'm not following. Yeah, you're saying it should be played more often. It seems wrong. It's not played more often. But actually, I don't really understand why it's not a good move and how exploited with black. Thanks a lot for your Lumiere. That's what I do. I provide Lumiere. Um, yeah, it is not a good move. How do we get there? C4, E6. <clears throat> So was this right? It should be seven castles, c5, and now e4. With the bishop on b3, the thing is, this makes some sense because after cd knight d4, the bishop on b3 and the knight on d4 team up to put some pressure on this e6 pawn. Here, there's zero pressure on the e6 pawn, and the white pieces just don't coordinate. We shouldn't blunder our queen because queen d4, bishop b5 check. But if we just go knight b7, black is already better here, believe it or not, because the white pieces are. Easy targets, bishop c5, knight e5, pawn to b4, bishop d6, queen b8, queen b6. It's so much easier for black to develop, and white has no active play at all. So this is a seriously bad outcome of the opening for white, even though it might not look like it. With the bishop on b3, as I said, at least there's some active options. But here, bishop to d3 and e4, they really don't go well together. So white stumbles into this position. Which is fine for black already. He should probably play I don't know, dc5, queen e2, or a4, b4, knight b1. Well, this is an excellent position to get with black. <laughs> Baljai. I'm mispronouncing that. Sorry. Saying, hi Jan, I posted this question before on opening clinic number 17, but as far as I could see, you didn't get around to answering it. Otherwise, please skip it. Mm. The variation, knight f3, knight f6, c4, c4, knight c3, d5, c, d, knight d5, e4, knight b4, bishop c4, knight d3, king e2, knight f4, king of 1, knight 6 b4, still playable for black. The question looks familiar. I would guess I answered it in the last opening clinic, but I also can't remember. So, might as well doing it, do it again. I thought it was pretty grim for black, but in recent life commentary on chess 24, interesting, after c4, c5, knight, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, the commentator remarked, why it better have something after 3d5? Um, yeah, you could still both be right. And again, I never believe commentators, they're normally full of it. Um, he says, keep up the good work, Jan B. Thank you, Jan B. Too bad I'm Jan G, otherwise I could make some I'm Jan A, you're Jan B jokes, but not going to be able to do it. So, what was it? Knight f3, knight f6. <coughs> oh, my voice is already leaving me. c4, c5, knight c3, d5, takes, takes. e4, knight b4, bishop c4, knight d3, king e2, knight f4, king f1. First of all, I think the major roadblock for white these days is to move knight d3 back, right? There's some theoretical debates here, but this has certainly overtaken knight e6 as the main line, and I thought after knight d3, black is doing all right. Therefore, it could still be that. Mm -hmm. That's maybe what the commentator, I'm not sure if I was the commentator, so I shouldn't diss that commentator too much, had a mind when he said, why well, better have something after d5. As for your question, I'm not really up to date after knight e6, b4, but it does look scary for black to me as well. And... CB knight d5, there was a recent Levon game which looked good for white, even though I'm sure you could find arguments for playing this position with black as well. In my days, this was a debate. I'm still not sure what the status is, because here after bishop e6, queen d3 check, according to my computer, things aren't so clear. Everybody goes bishop e6, d4, which in my days was not considered to be enough for black. And queen d3 might be interesting. And just as a bonus feature, g5 might be an interesting move. Same idea, but we have a little g4 option built in. 
But yeah, the main problem, I believe, theoretically, is that knight d3 is a tough nut to crack here. And after knight e6, b4, I'm with you. Things looking decent for white. Mm -hmm. Riptide is saying, hi Jan, my question is about 1e4, 2c5. No, 1e4, c5, 2b4. All right. I think that this gambit is not sound. I agree. But is there an easy way to refute it? What are White's tricks and plans that Black should be aware of? Thanks in advance. Hmm. This is this is the questions that are always tough for me. Here's a position after two moves. What are White's tricks and plans that I should be aware of? On a basic level, um, you should probably take the pawn to refute it. I guess b6 you could argue for, but take it looks decent. Um, this is pretty much the extent of my theoretical knowledge. I think we had the same question on an earlier opening click and I looked at it, but I can't remember much. Normally white players go a3, then d5 is what they play, and e5 looks good to me as well. Covering the pawn, staking a claim in the center, knight of three, knight c6, and I see nothing to be afraid of. Generally white sacrifice a pawn, but it doesn't really gain a lot of developing time in return. So black should be fine, no? Knight f3 maybe is smarter to avoid this e5. Then d5 takes, and knight f6 I would guess is fine. I, I never know nowadays with alpha zero, I'm not sure if my greedy ways are should be a thing of the past. But if I were you, I would not lose much sleep over the move to b4. Focus on knight f3. Or even c3 if you want to look at something boring. But b4, take it and be done with it. Mm, then, yeah, the general plans are to keep the pawn, develop our pieces, win. For white, the plans are to make things murky somehow. Mm, sorry, I can't go into more detail, but it's, it's very hard for me to answer questions on general plans after two moves. And Donald Angus, not a premium member. I'm so sorry, Donald. I hope I didn't make you angry. Morgeth is asking a similar question. What would you play against the Mora Gambit? E4, C5, D4, C takes D, C3, dot, dot, dot. Um, um, there I'll just contradict everything I said a minute ago. Because I'm a Mora Gambit aficionado. I've started playing it in my banter blitzes without ever looking at any theory. So I consider it a great opening now. Normal materialistic Jan would say, take it, white doesn't get enough developing time here either. And here, I believe the hot setup is the one with a6, knight, g7. I mean, you have some funky lines, I guess, but I, I don't really know theory. What do they do? They go bishop g5? I don't know. So if I want to know theory, and I was surprised by d4, c, d, c3, honestly, I probably go knight f6. I've always been comfortable playing these e5, knight d5 positions. I know Mora types, they're normally not happy when they're not a pawn down. So I go for this, and now e6, followed by d6, that sort of system, where I've always felt reasonably comfortable with black. Yakov Glavina. Is saying, hi Jan, I would like to know what do you think of this particular line that I started to play. I'm black. And 1d4, knight f6, 2 knight f3, g6, 3c4, bishop g7. Very hard to read with this system with the slashes. Anyway, 4g3, castles, 5 knight c3, d5, bishop g2. And I just played 6 dot 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 slash c5. Game continued, dc, queen a5, castles, dc, bishop f4, knight c6, queen c4, and I have a better position already. Boom. What do you think? Could white have played nine bishop e3 instead? And in general, is this c5 line playable? Thanks. Looks fine to me. I don't think this is a very cunning move order by white either way, the one you're talking about. Let me try to bring up my little board. B-O-R-E-D. And d4, knight f6, c4, g6, so do we get here g3, let's say, bishop g7. Oh, no, sorry. 
Knight mm, f3, bishop g7, g3, you said. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot how we got here. <coughs> Must find move order. D, ah, d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6, c4, bishop g7. No, same thing. G3 castles. First of all, it's very, very rare for white players to go knight c3 here. Like 100% of people, I believe, would play, or 99%, since you ran into one that did it, would play bishop g2 here. Since knight c3 normally is not a good move before black has committed to d6. So knight c3, d5, I like. Bishop g2, c5, which also seems to be fine. Um, I've never given this much thought because here dc4 is just considered to be a good move. So that's all I ever needed to know. Like queen a4, I think knight c6 is fine, and knight fd7, followed by knight b6, also supposed to be fine. And therefore, yeah, I never thought black needed a solution here. But c5 seems to be alright when you did dc, queen a5, castles dc. And I think my computer gave, what did he give here? He gave queen d4, knight c6, queen h4. No, no, knight c6, queen c4. Should e6, queen h4. But it looks reasonably equal to me as well. So yeah, I'm not sure what the, yeah. I think you just want to make us aware of this line right here. c5 looks fine. As far as I know, dc4 is also fine. But I wouldn't expect many people to go for this. Because most of the time people will go bishop g2 when things are different after d5, cd5. Anyway, thanks for pointing that out. Sanjoy Banerjee is saying, Hi Jan, could you provide some information about the Sicilian Nimsovich Rosolimo attack? Is that what's called? It's a long name. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, 3 bishop b5. I have recently started to play this from White's perspective. Since I was getting into trouble repeatedly in the Richter Rouser attack. Mm, I'm a bit confused because the line you're giving is 2 knight c6 bishop b5, but then in the Rouser you're giving 2 d6. How about you mean after knight f3 you could also reach it via knight c6? That's. I'm all for 3 bishop b5, I'm fine with that, but that's a surprising reason because the Rouser, not very popular, and secondly, not considered to be that dangerous. So it's a surprising reason to go for. 3 bishop b5, but I'm not against it. If I was an e4 player, I'd probably be doing the same thing. But once again, it's a major theoretical mainline nowadays. 3 bishop b5 is just as popular as d4. So yeah, to give me the position after 3 moves and say, give me some advice, is not... It's gonna be hard in this format. Didn't... Don't we have some video series on this? Didn't Robin maybe do something? I would... Don't we have a Van Kampen series that will teach you stuff here? I believe we did, so I would probably want to refer you to that. Um, me, I don't know much. I do know that you have to know what you want to do after e6. You can go for castles, knight g7, rook e1, a6, bishop f1, this kind of stuff. Or you can go for lines with c3, try to bring the bishop to c2, also playable. Or you can go for these positions, which are very complex strategically. Takes, takes, now b3 or d3 or queen e2 or whatever move tickles your fancy. And similarly, after g6, you have to decide if you want to play these positions after dc or bc. Or if you want to go for this other system with castles, bishop g7, rook e1. Who played this recently? I think Mamedov did this recently, right? Takes, takes, how does this go? 94. Both playable lines for white. Uh, what I'm saying is, yeah, you gotta build a repertoire and then take it from there. Three bishop b5, of course, an excellent move. <laughs> Perpetual stalemate is saying, he's answering questions people ask here. It's not an interactive show. I agree, but maybe by agreeing, I also prove him wrong, because since we interacted, the show just became interactive. But yeah, I'm not answering opening questions. 
from the chat. And so I'm trying to get through the 93 questions that were asked in the news article that we published. That is the format of the show. Mm, Duke Crusher saying, in the modern Benoni, another topic. What is the best way for white to proceed and keep an advantage? I lose to this opening frequently. I've already answered that very question earlier today. Have I not? When, let me see if I can remember what I said there. I said, go for this knight e2 system if you get the chance to do so. And then put the knight on g3 and take it from there. Mm. Certainly not the only way to fight for an advantage, but that's probably what I would do. The point is, or one of the points is, whenever they go a6, we go a4, that we probably don't have to go for f3s unless black goes for some rook e8 business. And in rook e8 business, even here, probably bishop g5 is a better move, just to make my point. In these positions, black typically wants the rook on f8 to support f5. And with the rook on e8, such positions are, I believe, supposed to be nice for white as well. So it's a zamish with an extra tempo since we didn't play f3. And I think it's a good line. Mm -hmm. Mr. C is saying, hello Jan. Recently I've decided to play Sicilian Taimanov with Queen c7, watching Robin van Kampen series. What are the differences in move order? Some people play 5a6 or 5 knight f6. I'm already not following. I guess you mean 6 knight f6 or a6, right? Let's see, because unless I'm confused. Let me count the moves here. 1 c5, 2 knight c6, See, I already forgot to count. 3c takes d4, 4e6. So this would be move number 5. And I guess you don't mean a6 or knight f6 here. Even though those are moves, but the time out of at least Robin's repertoire here starts with 5 queen c7. So a6 or knight f6, I guess it depends on the next white move a lot as well. Like after g3, knight f6 is a mistake because of bishop f4. So you go a6. Stuff like that. Or was it because of bishop f4? No, probably because of knight b5, queen b8. And now bishop f4, sorry. Mm -hmm. And that, I guess you will end up playing both most of the time. So if in doubt, start with a6. Or pretty much do whatever Robin says. I would guess that's a good idea. Um... What is the most trendy line from white sign nowadays? against Taimanov. Not sure, I think they're still doing the bishop e3, a6, queen f3, which started getting popular just around the time Robin recorded his series, so I'm not sure if he, I'm sure he covered it, but I'm not sure what he said about that. I think they're still discussing this. Um, and black needs to have a good reply here. Mm. And Mr. C has some more kind words. Thank you, Mr. C. Enjoying premium membership. Please consider doing E4, E5 sidelines video that series. Then repertoire will be complete. Um, we shall see. I felt like Magnus Carlsen asking you a question. Thank you for your wonderful work. You're very welcome. I'm sorry I might not have gotten the answer right. But that's also what I normally told everybody else. Mm. I throw rocks at blind kids. As we, as you do, is saying, hi Jan, we're still patiently waiting for that brand of your sweater from one of the, your most recent Banter Blitzes. Nakitano, I said so in the Banter Blitz. <laughs> Against d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, I like to aim for a tartar cover setup, since all the other options seem like opening a giant can of theory worms. Should I? You've already lost me. I'm, what are we talking about? What's the Tartakova? Mm. I'm going to do some guesswork once again. I'm bad with opening names, so apologies. But after this, you want to go for 
Do you say d5? No. After knight f3, you want to go for the Tartakova setup. I don't know what that means, but I do think that there's a line in the Queen's Gambit declined called Tartakova, something like that. Here, is this it? Here, e3 and knight bd7. So regarding the giant can of theory worms, of course, if you go d5, you got to be ready for the worm. That is g3. And there's also a giant can of bishop f4 here that you have to be aware of. So it's very hard to get by without them theories. Or you just play moves. That is legal. So is this the Tartakova? I'm sorry, I honestly am not sure. e3, knight bd7. And then what is the question? Should I go for the c6 line and then push c5 when the pieces are ideally placed? Hmm. When the white pieces are also ideally placed. Or the immediate c5 that Mr. Kasparov loved so much. Thanks. Where is Pramod NVS? Now you're saying that Mr. Kasparov loved so much makes me think... Kasparov didn't he play this line mainly? Are we talking about this? This at least is the Kasparov c5 push that I can think of. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing a lot of guesswork here. I could imagine you're talking about this position. I think is is this called Tartakova? I don't think it is. Anyway, here there's c6 or c5. I will play c6 in this position after c5. You have to suffer a bit and try to equalize a slightly worse position. So I probably will play c6 here. But this is a very, very specific position and very, very specific subline. So I'm not sure at all if you mean that or if you mean in general in these positions here. So, sorry I throw rocks at blankets, you've managed to confuse me. You might also have managed to confuse yourself. Um, if and though, yeah, Kramnik sometimes plays this stuff. He goes c5 here and he tries to equalize. It's a little shady, but Kramnik being Kramnik, knowing, knows everything about everything. He normally matches. Um, but yeah, next time give me, so, give me some moves. But then we might have to open that giant can of worms. And I'm being informed that it's b6 and 7 knight b7. Okay, then it's what I guessed on the second attempt. Is that called Tartakova, really? Wasn't that Bogul Yubov, Spassky? I don't know, stuff. Anyway. <clears throat> so. This, this is the line? I guess so, right? Even here there's quite some theory worms, right? Bishop d3 or cd, knight d5 and so on. Bishop e7, queen e7. I've recently seen somebody play this stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, nothing wrong with it. Like if you want to make life even simpler, you can go for this knight e4. But nothing wrong with b6 and yeah. As I mentioned, I'm guessing your c5 or c6 question refers to this very specific position here, where I would go with c6. Mm. Yapper 10 is saying... Hello Jan, I have a question about the Nidorf Sicilian. Some top players played the following line with white. E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, C, D, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, A6, Bishop E2, E5, 7, Knight F3, question mark, exclamation mark. That's bra brazen punctuation there. Some top players play it and you say, eh, dubious. At least that's how I remember it, so correct me if I'm wrong. Either way, I do like this positional approach, but always forget how to get on with white. All right. Um, can you show the general plans? There is my favorite question. The general plans of the system for white. Maybe show when to play a4 and bishop g5. Thanks for doing this show. Really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So e4, good old Nidorf. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. No check this time. a6, bishop e2, e5, knight f3. Yeah, people started doing that a bit more recently. 
doesn't look that scary, but there is some, some bite to it. And I've seen a bunch of dudes having successes. So black has to decide what he wants to do. If he goes h6 to stop bishop g5, who was it? Our boy MVL had a lot of success with shuffling this horsey around to e3 very quickly. I think he won some nice game here with knight d2. So most guys play bishop e7. You go bishop to g5. Your plan is very cavemanish. Take on f6, go knight d5, then maybe bishop c4 in many lines. Mm, I think Karana maybe recently went for this stuff. Doesn't look like much, but why does a tiny edge after this bishop e6? Just, you know, trying to argue. d5 square is slightly weak. So in order to stop that, sometimes black goes knight b7, so you can recapture on f6 with the other knight, and this is the time where you go a4, trying, you know, to avoid b5 and that kind of stuff. And then, I don't know what the plan is, to be perfectly frank, I guess you also maneuver around. Good castles, knight d2, knight c4. Mm -hmm. Generally, you shouldn't be too afraid of an early b5 here, if it happened here, for example. You'd be quite happy exposing that and using this as a weakness. So black has to be very careful with his move order as well. But yeah, general plans. If bishop g5 is stopped, shuffle your knight around towards this square. If bishop g5 is allowed and black goes bishop e6, then take on knight d5. Claim a little something. If knight b7, I, I don't know, but then you, I guess you argue that this knight is blocking the bishop. We go a4, try to grab some space. Maybe there's a little something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kananix Machen is saying, Hey Jan, I like to play g6, bishop g7 against basically anything, but struggle to find a good response. Against e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, 3, c4, c5, knight f3. Since while I like to transpose into an accelerated dragon, I really don't like facing the Morochi bind. I hear you. Can you recommend me any good move other than 4c takes d4? Thank you and greetings from Hannover. Greetings to Hannover. Um, well, as usual, I think white is better in all these Marochi bind positions as well. And here, if you're committed to c5, of course, it's not too late to say, okay, I'll play the King's Gambit. King's Indian, sorry, d6. Knight f6 or even knight c6, you could make a case for, even though I won't. And after c5, yeah, of course, there's d5 and there's knight f3. I don't know, cd is the main move. There's some of these, some sneaky lines like d6, knight c3. Some people like to play queen a5. Maybe you could go for that if your opponent gets rattled here. You can put some pressure on them very quickly with bishop g4. Objectively, I'm not so sure after d5, I guess. Things are risky here for black. Now this could be an attempt to mix it. Of course, you still gotta be ready to deal with d5 or even bishop e2. But yeah, this could be one line. That's all I got if we're trying to avoid this. I don't know, there's all kinds of goofy, goofy tries here, queen a5 check immediately as well. But I would not, I wouldn't dare to do it with black. So, apologies, but of course, there's a bit of a price to pay for trying to do the same against everything all the time. Mm. <laughs> Danotello is saying, I'm a headshot player and I'm struggling against the line 1c4, knight f6, 2 knight c3, c5, knight f3, e6, e4, knight c6, bishop e2. Here I don't like the hedgehog setup. Mm. Yeah, once your knight is on c6, you should not hedgehog it up. Because I don't think, I think it's a good version for white. I looked at 5d5, but it seems that black has no winning chances at all. What do you recommend for black after bishop e2? Um, what do I recommend? How do we get there? Mm. 
this stuff here. As a hedgehog player, can you play b6 here? I'm not sure. Anyway, knight c6, bishop e2. Two things. One, I think e5 is fine, even though you're losing time. It's not that relevant, really, with the position so blocked. e5 followed by d6. That's what Magnus played in a game against MVL, if I'm not mistaken. Two, queen b6 is sort of a cute move, stopping white from going d4. Castles, you go bishop e7. Then castles, and it's a bit annoying for white players. I play this line because I want to get in d4 to have to deal with that. Now they have to start going for some weird a3, rook b1 plans. But I do believe this queen b6 is sort of a playable move as well. And I also believe, but we've already ruled that out, the black equalizes if he knows what he's doing after d5. But I do agree that it's not giving black a lot of winning chances. So I'd probably, if I ended up in this position, I'd probably go e5 or queen b6. Or d5. And I don't know, I hope you like one of those. Queen b6 might be the one. <clears throat> How are we doing? How many questions? We're two hours in. Mm, Tim Stemmler is asking, Hi Jan, welche... Ah, this is, this is in the Germans. I'll translate it, that's what I do. Hi Jan, which variations does white avoid with the move order d4, c4, g3? Compared to d4, c4, knight f3, um, against one d5, two e6, one knight f6, two e6, why not f6, two g6? Thanks already. Oof, it's like a maze. You want me to. Um, oof. That's. First of all, wherever you go, g3, I guess you're happy to play the g3 related system. So if you go g3 here, let's say. You're avoiding the queen's Indian because bishop g2 would be a bit awkward. But obviously you have to be ready to play the Catalan and you have to be ready to play the Benoni with the pawn on g3 or these knight f3 lines, which are nothing special. So you avoid the queen's Indian in this move order, but of course you have to play the Catalan. So you avoid the non-Catalans like knight f3, d5, knight c3. Um, well, what were the others? After d4, d5, I don't think it makes much sense to go for an early d3 normally. Here. Not sure if there's a drawback. There could be a drawback. Some quick dc4 followed by c5. So yeah, here g3 avoids nothing. Go knight f3. Then play g3 next move if you want to. And against d4, knight f6, c4, g6. It's more of a decision if you want to play with g3 or not then the move order is not that important. You can go start with knight f3 followed by g3 or start with g3. After g3, there's some additional options like one we've talked about earlier, like this stuff. But it's nothing that really moves the needle all that much. So it depends. You're avoiding the Queen's Indian, but you're allowing some other stuff mainly. Hans-Erik Hilberg is asking Hmm. Hiya, thanks for a great show. Eh, I'm not sure, probably by now you're watching and thinking, eh, I might have issued some premature thanks there. Could you please tell how to play the London system and the main ideas to transfer from the opening to the middle game in this opening as wide? Actually, I cannot. These are the questions which I really can't answer. Please dedicate two minutes to talking generally about the London system, which is not even a line, but it's putting the bishop on f4 and the plans how to go out of the opening into the middle game. I've given a black repertoire against the London system in one of my video series. Other than that, what can I tell you? Normally, London system players, you want to go knight f3, e3, h3, bishop e2, short castle. Once this bishop gets attacked, put it on h2 and then have a look around. What's important is that nowadays, because I have this in pretty much every Vantablitz show, in this position you should not play knight f3, but you should play knight to d2. That's not really a plan, I understand, it's not a transition to the middle game, but it matters because after knight f3, queen b6, you won't get a good middle game. Well, after knight d2, you have a better shot at it. Um, but yeah, in general, I don't, I'm very much a move by move player, like here. 
there are reasons why 92 is better than 93, but it's nothing I can put into general plans, um, transition, beautiful words. So I always very much struggle with those questions. But yeah, I guess the general plan of the London system is get the bishop out, get the knight out, play e3, play bishop e2, play short castles, play h3. So the bishop has a nice home here. Then decide if you want to play with c3 or c4. Put the knight on t2 or put the knight on c4. And best of luck with it. Discombobulated is saying in this position. I used to think that bishop d7 is best and only go for the typical knight maneuver knight e8, knight c7 after white spent a move on h3. However, recently a strong player told me rook b8 in the diagram position is best. Can you tell me the most accurate move order and the reason behind it? Thanks. So you're basically saying, eh, I want a second opinion. I don't trust this rook b8 fella. Let's try to get to that position. How do you get there? With a sensible move order? Okay, I'm, I'm not sure my move order will be very sensible, but we'll find a way. So was this? This position, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> this position. Yeah, the thing, bishop d7, I've never seen this. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, to be perfectly frank. The thing with these knight e8 plans is it would be nice to have time to put the knight on c7 and then to support b5 or go all the way to e6 and d4. But here white goes bishop e3, threatening d4, which he can't allow. So you have to go knight d4. And then white is very fast with rook b1 and b4. So knight e8 is not ideal. Bishop d7, like I said, I don't know, feels a bit off topic to me. <laughs> so I believe the price for the best move in this position is shared between rook b8 and a6, which are both um, trying to accomplish the same goal, which is to prepare b5. I don't think it matters with which one you start. I probably start with rook b1 and rook b8 as well, just for psychological reasons, so I don't forget it later and I don't blunder anything on this diagonal. And yeah, as far as I know, black is fine here. The plan is to go a6, followed by b5. If white goes for a4, then it can be an idea to start bringing this knight around. So the strong player dude that you interviewed, I believe is right. <clears throat> Probably a strong player. Clash is saying. My question is about the line. d4, d6, e4, e5. All the same, e4, d6, d4, e5. Looks strange and foolish. Eh, not foolish. Yeah, not great. But I don't see a big difference to the as my partially line. E4, D6, D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, E5. I do though. Surely 3, Knight F3, Knight D7, Bishop C4 is good for white, but Knight D7 is not forced, and the middle game end game after D E D E Queen D8, King D8 looks not so great. Many thanks. Um Nah, don't do that. This is, I, I would guess this is bad for black. Takes, takes, bishop c4. It does matter if knight c3, knight f6 is included here or not. The knight is misplaced on c3. And here, let's say after bishop. First of all, you don't have any bishop b4 counterplay, which you would have against the knight on c3. And after bishop e6, it's also important that this knight is not stuck on c3, but has a much easier route towards the c4 square. So yeah, this is a bad line for black. And... Don't play it. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> do not do it. If you need to go for such things, go knight f6, knight c3, e5, which has zero drawbacks compared to 2 e5 and a lot of pluses that you force the knight here. Fabi. Long time no talk to Fabi. What's Fabi saying? Hi Jan, what's your opinion on Black's new move 6 bishop c5 in this variation of the English diagram? Uh, c4 e5, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, g3, d5, cd, knight e5, bishop g2, bishop c5. 
Yeah, this is getting popular, isn't it? According to the Chess24 database, it was first played between 2400 players in July 2017. Since then, it has exploded. I've noticed that. I haven't looked at it that much. It has quickly built its own body of theory. Generally speaking, it's a very logical move because hmm, it seems that white has no direct way to exploit it. And then it's an achievement for black not having to play knight to b6, which we've played for centuries, followed by bishop e7, but just get the pieces out more quickly. Um, the theoretical debates have been based around all kinds of different things here recently, right? Castles, castles, d3. The question is if you have to go bishop b6, which was... Oh, sorry, I should, I should bring up the board. Here we go. Castles, castles, d3. The achievement I was talking about is that black doesn't have to waste time, apparently, bringing his knight back to b6, which they thought we have to. But it turned out that after knight e5, knight c3 here. Black is actually fine. So nothing fast the white can do. But they've still tried to gain a little edge here in these slower lines. Kayakin tried to defend this bishop b6 position but ended up in some trouble. Even though I think move by move his stuff holds. And rook e8 was the latest debates. I don't know. I think that... Black is alright, but I haven't spent that much time looking at it. It seems like the positions are still a little alien to play for black in practice. A little tough to play for black in practice, which might explain the bad score. But because we're not really used to these setups from the black side, maybe. I'm not sure, that's just a theory. But it does seem like a play line, and I expect it to be around. I have to admit, I haven't really done that much work. I don't have a repertoire here for black with it that I have a definite opinion, but I'm expecting to see more of it. Sperber number 67 is saying, ah, it's in German, so I'll use my translating skills. This is a thinly hidden job application as translator when they do these politicians interviews. Let me be the man in the year. Hello, Jan. To my surprise, I have noticed that the lines e4, c6, d4, d5, knight d2, d takes e, knight takes e4, knight f6, knight takes f6, knight takes f6, or e4, c6, knight c3, d5, knight f3, d takes e4, knight e4, knight f6, knight f6, e f6, um, have been growing popular again. Played, for example, by Carlson, Chobava, and Howell. Isn't it so? <laughs> that in these lines black has a worse pawn structure without realistic hopes for counterplay. Which variations do you recommend from the white point of view? Thank you very much. You have to differentiate there. Those are two, even though they look very similar, those are two quite different lines actually. In this position after knight c3, d5, knight f3, d, e, knight e4, knight f6 has always been a serious option. Because here, this knight on f3 is slightly misplaced. And black gets easy enough play if you get this position. Bishop d6, castle, queen c7, bishop g4 if it's allowed. And sometimes f5, knight d7, knight f6. And with this knight on f3, it's not easy for white to get an advantage. That's why I always consider the move queen e2 here to be the main line. Which then leads to its own set of funny lines. Stuff like this. And people are discussing if you can take the pawn or not. And... Well, after d4, d5, knight c3, this is more of an offbeat variation indeed. Here, I believe white has always been supposed to be better because you don't go knight f3. Here, they mainly play the setup with c3, bishop d3, queen c2, knight e2. But yeah, it's not as simple as black has the worst pawn structure and we will win the pawn endgame because it's going to be very hard to build a passed pawn and use that. There's lots of pieces on the board. And the black king is quite safe behind this mass of pawns. However, as far as I know, this system is still supposed to be a little better for white. No, c3, bishop d6, bishop d3. How do they do this castle? Queen c2, rook e8, knight e2, g6, h4, I believe is the critical line. And I thought this was pleasant for white. Gotta admit, I haven't spent 
a lot of time here either. There's some recent Chubawa game I've seen, but it looked like he got into trouble as well. So I would not expect the one after e4, c6, d4, d5, knight, c3 takes knight f6 to stick, especially because bishop f5, as we've talked about earlier, I think. Solves most of Black's problems here. But the one after knight c3, knight f3 is quite playable. <clears throat> Carlson Superlight is saying, I'm a 1400 player and like end games. Is playing e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, e5, d, e, d, e, queen d8, king d8. A good opening to play exclusively as black against different caliber players from the book. Play 1d6 against everything by Tsude and Hickel. Greetings to my old teammate, your Kickle. I have to admit, I have not read the book and I guess you know that my credo is normally not do this against everything. I want to improve my writing without studying too much theory. Don't we all? And e4, e5 has too much theory for my liking. I drew two games this weekend with the opening. There you go. So, frankly, at 1400, you can play whatever opening you want. And with practice, you will improve your rating. And I would, especially since it's not exclusively about short-term results, but about improving the rating, I would probably try to play something with more pieces on the board, because then you will experience the full scope of chess positions with queens, without queens, and so on and so forth, and not try to get rid of the queens ASAP, because that might make your improvement a little slower. Having said that, we earlier talked about this position without and knight c3, knight f6. This endgame, I'm not sure if black equalizes fully, but this is a playable line. Like here, bishop g5 or bishop c4 are critical moves. But this, I believe, yeah, black has a decent chance to hang in there. So I'm not against the line per se, but the approach I want to improve by playing the same endgame sounds a little counterintuitive to me. I, my advice will be the same as always. Play main lines, even if you don't know any theory or you don't want to study any, because they will imp expose you to a greater spectrum of chess and chess ideas and help hence make you improve faster. Spieler15 is saying, hey Jan, first of all, thanks for your great work. Thank you, thank you. Here's my question. I became interested in the Accelerated Dragon for Black. Aren't we all? I played the Sveshnikov, but my opponents, mostly 2200 plus feeder rating. Those are minis. And know their stuff, and I get dry positions. Okay, and I mostly enjoy crazy tactical complications. So you decided to play the Accelerated Dragon. I wondered why a lot of attacking players, for example Ituri Saga, are playing the Accelerated Dragon on a regular basis. I always thought that the Marachi is just pretty one-sided play, but I found quite an interesting idea played by Ituri Saga. In long line, bishop e5, rook ft1, e6. With the idea of playing queen e7 or queen h4 and f5. What do you think? Is it a valid option to meet the Marachi? Or is there another interesting try for black to make things more sharp? Thanks in advance and keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, I've noticed this line you're mentioning. It's... Um, I have no idea how we get there, but I shall try. Takes, takes, g6. Of course, there's many more lines and move orders in the Marachi and all that, like anything you do here. Like, for example, starting with f3 will open a different can of worms. But let's stick to... Um, this one, how do I get that? <clears throat> Sorry, I might screw up the move order, but I'll get there in the end. Is it this? This stuff, right? And you go rook ac1, rook b1, I think, is more common here still. Even though, I guess you can play the same idea with e6, bishop e5. And yeah, I have nothing bad to say against about it. 
I don't think it changes the nature of the position that much. And if white is patient, typically black will have to be patient here too. That's like a bishop f1, queen, so 92 or whatnot. Tending 94. Might get hard to mobilize with f5. But I do agree that once you reach this position, this is the best plan. Me personally, I normally try to keep these knights on the board in all kinds of... <coughs> accelerated dragon situation so i don't have that much experience with these bishop e3 setups but here as i said you also have to be ready to meet f3 stuff like that but yeah it's not a setup i have any beef with so if you insist on the accelerated dragon i think you've stumbled on a decent way to play it even though yeah i'd still take white in this position but that applies probably to most main lines mainline positions Mm, Captain Coca-Cola saying hello Mr. Gustafsson. Oh, so formal. Thank you for doing yet another opening clinic. Your videos for Black against the Italian are great. I didn't get the time to watch your videos on Alpha Zero, but I suppose it's as good. Nah, I sort of mailed those in. I'm still as lazy as I was last time when I asked you for a simple line for White against the Yenish. Today I'd like to give your... I'd like you to give your opinion from Black's point of view against the Scotch. I've played the 4 bishop b4 check for a bit, but the arising positions are not always to my liking. Since I don't really want to enter 4 knight f6, 4 bishop c5, could you give me some advice? Thanks for your work and I wish you a happy new year. Happy new year to you and to everybody else, Captain Coca-Cola. Probably should have wished that earlier, but yeah, happy 2018, people. So, if I understood you correctly, Captain Coca-Cola, you're saying against the Scot. I don't like the main three moves. Please help me. That's making my life a little tougher, right? If you don't like knight f6, which is the move I play, or bishop c5, which is the other main line, or bishop b4 check that you've dabbled with, what's left? Queen f6? The problem is this transposes to bishop c5 most of the time. After bishop e3, you probably want to go bishop c5. And after knight takes c6, you also want to go bishop c5, transposing to this line. So, I'm sorry man, I understand your laziness, but if you want to play against the scotch, it really, really helps to play one of the three best moves in this position. Otherwise, you're giving up a lot. I could give some nonsense um, answer like, oh, why don't you try knight takes d4, queen takes d4, knight to e7. And maybe you won't be lost out of the opening. But the truth is, you will be seriously worse. Therefore, I would not recommend it. Go knight f6. Come on. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Takes, takes, e5, queen e7, queen e2, knight d5, c4 is the main line. And here, you have to make a tough choice between those moves. But those positions will be more rewarding than any experimental lazy fourth move you come up with here. Sorry man, can't help you there. Panorch is saying howdy Jan. I've been trying this line as black with some decent results. Mm -hmm. E4 C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, C D, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, E5, Knight B5, Knight D B5, I'm guessing. H6. Guys generally enter the end game with knight e6, bishop d6, queen e6, queen e7. And king e7, and then start to realize white's position isn't as easy as it looks. It isn't? I've won a bunch of games just playing bishop e6, b5, doubling on the c file, maybe some knight a5, knight c5, shooting against, etc. It seems a good practical weapon. A lot of white players just run out of ideas once they can't put their bishop on g5. Assuming there must be some reason, the top dudes never try this. My question is why not? I don't know, it doesn't look that good, does it? So this, 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 and h6. First of all, it's not really threatening anything, so I guess I could just go bishop c4, right? Which looks like a problem. Um, but secondly, let's enter your end game. Isn't white better here? 
I have bishops. I like bishops. Mm. Something like this. I'd take white. Four, three, four, h4, g5, maybe throw in some a3. I don't know. I, I understand there's some appeal in that, yeah. It might be easier to play, even though, I don't know, you never get b5 because a6 weakens this square, so I go bishop b6. Looks to me like the best black can hope for is getting some d5 and some. I don't know, but after d5, I'll have bishop c5 checks as well. No! To me, it looks like white is better here. I like my bishops, and yeah. I'm not that surprised strong players don't go here. So, two reasons. Um, this endgame, I think white is better. The other, after h6, bishop c4. Looks like a problem as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Sorry, not a fan. Eve M. He's asking, hey Jan, what is your opinion, the best way, well, in your opinion, the best way to meeting the line? And I think, yeah, we have a similar question later. 6b3 is black. I would like to play c5 in order to meet bishop b2 with d4, but I have difficulties equalizing after c5, cd, knight d5, d4. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Um, what would you recommend and what is the current state of theory of this line kind regards yeah i'm with you i've gone through that process as well so how do we put this on the board this stuff well yeah c5 was pretty much the conventional wisdom but these positions, I do believe that black can probably equalize by knowing everything. But there was some hard waters to navigate and it wasn't easy. So I believe I and from practice I've seen many others have also come to that conclusion. Would not go c5, I would play b6 here. When, well the general plan is to just play bishop b7 and knight b7 then have a look around. But it does look... Like black, if he knows what he's doing here, he has a very good chance of equalizing. If white goes cd5, we typically want to take with the knight. These edd4 structures I'm not a fan of. And here after d4, knight f6, intending knight b7, c5, seem to equalize more or less. So, yeah, I guess that's what I would do. But I do recognize here yeah, that it's a bit of a nuisance, that these cd lines. Even though, as I said, if you want to spend a lot of time... You can probably find equality in all these things, but it's not a lot of fun. So I would go b6, not c5 currently. Pick me panda is saying, Hi Jan, first let me thank you for the great content you're regularly providing us here with here at Chess24. Thank you, Pick me panda, you're very welcome. My question, what do you think of five knight takes e4 in the scotch four knights? e4, e5, double exclaim, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, d4, ed, knight d4, knight e4. Solely enough to play in tournament games or just a one-trick pony in the four knights? To be honest, I have never given this any thought before I saw this question. Mm, and I was surprised. I just looked at it for literally three minutes maybe. That's not as bad as I thought. So, interesting. Thanks for pointing that out. Knight takes e4. I guess the problem is a practical weapon is up to knight c6. We by force get this very dull endgame. Because mainly my problem with this four knight scotch is always how can I mix it. Because the positions after bishop b4. I'm not scared, but they are not very exciting. So there, knight e4, white could wipe the board clean of pieces. The critical approach must be to take, go f3, d5, bishop b5. But in the very limited time I spent, I couldn't come up with anything conclusive here. So it might very well be playable. Who knew? Stuff like this, rookie one. I guess white is supposed to be a little better. But things don't look all that clear. So, by all means, keep doing it. But once you have one, two games with this in the database, of course, stronger opponents, they will 
target this line very specifically, and then you might want to make the switch to to bishop b4. But mainly, yeah, I should be thankful that you pointed this move out. I wasn't aware of it, and it's not as ridiculous as it looks. Just the moves we all want to play. Okay. Chilkröte 77. Hmm, Chilkröte, I think there's a guy who keeps crushing me in bullet. Saying, hi Jan, I'm playing the accelerated dragon with black. What a surprise. A problem I'm facing sometimes is 7 bishop c4 for white. Uh, isn't that the move everyone plays? I've tried many options, like castle bishop b3, a5, castles a4, which has a 20% score after knight a4, knight e4, knight b5. Yeah, that's not a good line, as I mentioned earlier. Or 7 d6, which is not really satisfying since white controls the center and my counterplay in the, on the queen side is not strong enough. Could you help me with an answer to 7 bishop c4 for black? Not really. That is pretty much the status quo. Like, we've talked about the exact same thing earlier, haven't we? Um, Many people have this question, so we've seen all kinds of experimentation. I agree, a5 castle isn't really playable. So, as I said, I would go for d6, bishop d7, whatever, and queen d2. Mm, these lines, even though they might not be that much fun, they still look like the most mm, realistic setup to play for me. Now d5 is being investigated, but yeah, I'm just repeating myself. Ed, I don't see how black equalizes. Rook e8, I don't really trust. You can always play this queen a5 business, I guess, probably move earlier. But it's not exactly inspiring as well. It's just a solid, but slightly worse position. <clears throat> These kind of, kinds of things. Um, so yeah, there's no answer. Don't play the accelerated dragon if you're not comfortable with those positions. Um, or... Go for it and start playing the dragon once you get here. A lot of white players, they won't be very comfortable playing the dragon with the bishop on c4. Um, so... Yeah, no other solutions. I wouldn't play this with black, so I can't empathize that much. Vanatar is saying... Hello, Jan. My question is about the Yates variation. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, d6, c3, castles, d4 in the Rui Lopez. In the line that continues, knight bishop g4, d5, knight f5, bishop c2, c6, a3, every book I look at recommends bishop c8 instead of bishop f3, which was played in the past. Now I understand people like the two bishops, but bishop f3, queen f3, c, d, e, d. Seems to provide a target for black on d5 with something like knight c4, knight d2, knight b6, and maybe knight f1, knight bd5. Can that black an extra pawn? Why is this bad? Worse than the bishop c8 line. I mean, it's an extra pawn that it appears black can hold on to without much difficulty. Thanks in advance. Now, I like grabbing pawns as much as the next guy, but that line, I'm not so sure about. It looks a bit scary. Doesn't, look, doesn't it look a little scary? Hmm. Oh, sorry. How do we get this? B5, D6, here we are. The thing is, D5 is not supposed to be critical here, because Bishop C8, as you mentioned, is fine for black. Bishop E3 is the line people spent more time looking at. So after D5, Knight A5, Bishop C2, C6, at some point I felt very smart playing Queen C8, Bishop D7 here, but I think C6 is fine. Um, don't they normally take here d c queen c seven or oh, maybe they start with h three and then after bishop c eight they take but yeah, I think bishop c eight is fine, so I've never really lost much sleep over this either. You're asking about this position c d e d knight c four, which doesn't look that bad, but after knight b d two knight b six knight f one, I'd be scared to take this pawn takes knight g three there's all these pieces staring down our king side. And even though we have an extra pawn, we can't really use it for anything active in the near future. Here, no, this looks scary to me. Like, let's say g6, bishop h6, rook e8, rook a d1. All kinds of knight f5s looming. This bishop can go here. No, I'm, I'm not with it. This does look a little dangerous. Maybe, 
think maybe it makes sense to start with with this, try to stabilize first. But no, I understand why people go bishop c8 there, which is supposed to be fine. Here, eh, I'm a little scared. And I'm a big pawn grabber, so. Wouldn't go there, but if I did, yeah, look at rook e8 and g6 before taking the pawn grabber. Fravatel is saying, ah, he's giving some advice to, um, I don't know, Chilkröte. This is Jan's opening clinic, not Fravatel's opening clinic. How dare you? But yeah, I think we've covered stuff he's mentioning, rook e8 or queen a5, d6 and so on. Mm, Chess HV says, hi Jan, what lines do, would you recommend in a Sicilian with white to an amateur player? Who hasn't got the time to spend much time learning theory? Just play! Just play stuff. Play main lines. Even if you don't have any time learning theory, they will still make you improve faster. If your goal is to improve. I don't mind if the position is not objectively great. That's a plus and can do anything. As long as there are decent chances for both sides. Yeah, there should be decent chances for both sides with white if you're willing to play anything, right? I don't know, I've never played any Sicilians in my life. If I were to do it now, I would probably, with my brand of chess, I would probably play three bishop b5 here. And full disclosure, probably play bishop b5 check here as well. Because, um, yeah, I'm not really into the sharp open Sicilians. I feel it's a little late for me to catch up in all these lines. So I'd go for bishop b5 systems. But you can pretty much do whatever you want. You, if you feel like you enjoy sharp positions, just just go for the main lines, man. A6, go for bishop g5, go for bishop e3, go for bishop c4, maybe not bishop c4, bishop e2, h4. And even if you don't know much theory, you'll learn stuff by playing this. But yeah, what I would do is bishop b5 systems, but that's just me being dull. It's snowing, it's less dull. He's saying, hi Jan, you rock, thank you so much. What do you think of the knight of continuation 6h4? There you go. Um, yeah. It seemed at some point they had this competition like, let's come up with a new ridiculous move in the knight of. First they tried a3, which was played by Kayakin. No, first by Magnus and then by Kayakin. Then, or I think this was before knight b3 was a thing. Bartel had a couple of games with knight b3 in this position. And then h4 became a trend. And I'm, I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to make fun of any h4s. Random h4s and g4s. That's, that's more on chess for you. h4. I don't know. It looks weird. But I'm guessing it's probably here to stay as well. My favorite line is knight c6. They go h5. Just, you know, keep pushing the pawn. Um, Recently, no, there were some games. No, knight b7, g4. This is Karana Grishuk. Highest level of chess. g4, d5, takes knight b6. Looks like it's equalizing, but Karana went on to win that game. So, I'm not going to disrespect h4. Why not push that h4? What could be more important? But yeah, I've never played h4 or g4 in my life. So, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't dare. Big boy rg. Big boy or g? Big boy RG 2015 saying, Hi Jan, I would like to reiterate all the previous thanks for the excellent entertainment provided in these clinics and Ventablitz, etc. You are very welcome. My questions revolve around Alpha Zero. Wow, this is a long article. Alpha Zero's recent games against Stockfish 8. SF8 for short. Thanks for clearing that up. Irrespective of the slight handicaps with one minute per move and no opening book for SF8, the results were particularly impressive in terms of the number of calculations per second each system was using. Was this your dissertation or chess opening question? Um, something like 70,000 uh, pruned approach per second, V80 million per second brute force SF8, and the 10 games published were uh, works of art. Now there's three questions about those. I'm not sure if this is really in the scope of this little format, but you might have seen that I did a video series on six of the games where I annotated the games in detail. And there's also another video where we talked 
all these AlphaZero questions with Peter Swidler for 45 minutes, so you might want to check that out. We discussed, do you believe in the emergence of AI, blah, blah. And do you have your own beliefs as to why the other AlphaZero wins were not published? I don't know, I guess they weren't nice games. The number of wins with black, I believe, was three, was 25 is white, which is reminiscent of the old saying, if God plays chess at... If God played God at chess, white would probably win. Nah, I disagree with that statement. I believe it would be a draw, and I believe there were more draws than white wins in these matches as well. Um, what's the question? If <coughs> Alpha Zero, yeah, he didn't play E4 in the games published, or I think in the stats published. I know, E4, more forced lines, maybe the higher the level, the harder it is to, yeah, get a playable position there. I'm not sure if that's what Alpha Zero learned during his study. But for more details on all these things, I'd like to refer you to the opening series, because, yeah, in this format here, I can't answer in great length. I can't speak anymore. It does sound like big boy Archie. Let's give an alpha zero. More thought than me, probably. I just thought, oh, beautiful games. Flo Power is saying, Hi Jan, what line would you suggest for black if you play the hyper accelerated? Wah. Should I drink water? This non stop talking about openings makes me re really thirsty. So, this is me in a nurse costume. I'll be back in a second. Back again. Should I sit up straight, like face the camera? Ah, that's asking too much, isn't it? <clears throat> should I remove the dirty coffee, coffee mug? No, I should answer more accelerated quest dragon questions. Let's do this. Hi Jan, what line would you suggest for black if you play the hyper accelerated dragon and your opponent goes for the Morochi bind? Don't do it? Is that a legal recommendation? e4, c5, knight f3, g6, d4, cd, knight d4, knight c6, c4, bishop g7, bishop e3, gs flow. Don't do it. But if you have to, didn't we have an excellent recommendation there earlier by our boy? I forgot who it was. Apologies. Was it Chilkut? No, it was somebody else. Huh? I can't remember anything ever. So, yeah, don't do it is my main recommendation. If you have to. I don't know, in this position, sometimes I play this, right? Just to be annoying. So I'll probably do this, hope for a move repetition. But, um, yeah, I guess play the main lines here, hope for the best. But I've also mentioned many times, I don't believe in black, in accelerated dragon slash Marot in Marochi structures. So I would rather drink this very cold coffee than having to face Marochis from the black side of the board. Because you have less space and you don't have any sensible Pawn breaks, you know, you can't get b5 or t5. So all you can do is sit and wait and hope that white doesn't tear down your position. Hmm. Let's hope there's some more questions on the accelerated dragon. Berliner Bär. Nah, Berliner Bär sticks to German, but it's a Karakan question. Saying, hi Jan, I have a question about the Karakan in which black. Um, does forego an early knight bd7 and develops his king side first. e4 c6, d4 d5, knight c3, d e, knight e4, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6, knight f3, e6, h5, bishop h7, bishop d3, bishop d3, queen d3, knight f6, bishop d7, bishop d7, castle, castle, knight e4. Is this line more comfortable or less comfortable for black than the main line with knight bd7? Well, it can't be less comfortable, obviously, because we could transpose to it in this very position you gave if we were to play knight bd7, no? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with more comfortable. How do we get here? I have this, this, this. And your particular mover here, knight e4, I'm not, sh not so sure about king b1, if we have anything better than knight b7 here, this could be discussed. But after knight e4, there is a clear plus to not having played knight b7. 
because here we can just go for this end game. No, take queen d5, takes, takes. This is fine for black, I guess. Why we'll start some initiative here? That still looks fine for black. So that is a clear difference. Of course, the price you pay by going for this move order is you are allowing knight e5s, which you have to be at least ready for. I'm not saying this is particularly scary, but you have to be prepared for stuff like this. You know, nothing's free. But now it seems like this early e6 plan is making a comeback. And black is quite happy playing those lines. Hmm. Slava Wef is saying, hello Jan, what is current state of Petrov these days? That's another question, literally that question. I'm not sure if it's from Slava F. I'm not saying that. But literally the question, talk generally about the Petrov. I get every opening clinic without ever any lines given, just yeah. And Petrov, I, people used to play the Petrov, now they play the Berlin. What's wrong with the Petrov? Nothing's wrong with the Petrov. Mm. All I can give is the same answer I'm always giving. Chinese guys still very successful with the Petrov. They have some other guys on their team now, like Fabiano Carana started playing the Petrov quite regularly. Anish Giri still Petrov do once in a while. Um, and yeah, the speech I normally give here is that people stop playing it when white had more success with knight c3. But now after knight c3 dc, it looks like black is quite comfortable. Defending these positions with bishop e7, knight c6, bishop e6, a6, queen d7, long castles. They've been holding those quite comfortable. So white went back <coughs> to these d4 lines. But here, especially the Chinese players, also showed a bunch of new ideas. Introducing bishop f5, knight d6 ideas. Caruana has been upholding bishop d6. So no, the Petra is in good shape. By all means, stick to it. Knock yourself out. Nothing wrong with it. Lerxt is saying, hi Jan, what about this? White is about to snag the bishop pair in this variation of the Slav. I know, right? Is this okay for black? Yeah. If so, can you please co provide some concrete details like, on what black's plans and ideas should be? Once again, my favorite wording, concrete details on plans and ideas. In the upcoming middle game positions that are likely to arise. If not, can you recommend an alternative for players that don't play the semi Slav? Sure. Mm, d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, e3, bishop f5, knight c3. Now the line you're talking about is e6, knight h4 where the concrete details and the plans change drastically with Black's next move, which is why I'm more of a moves than a plans guy. Here, bishop e4, very different from the immediate bishop g6, if you force this pawn to f3. White plans will resolve more around preparing e4 and playing in the center here after queen b3. While after the direct bishop g6, white has a wider choice between different plans. He can sometimes take and go for rook b1, b4, and play setups with g3, setups with bishop e2. White has a lot of options here. In my opinion, white is slightly better, but black is very solid, so it's a matter of taste. More than anything, I wouldn't do it. I, if I had to play this position, would probably play with like a6, when after knight h4, our bishop can still escape. Therefore, white can't get the two bishops so easily, of course. There's other theoretical lines to consider after a6, like queen b3, knight e5, bishop e2, and so on. But that's what I would do, because I like my bishops. I want them taken. Oscar Shales is saying, Hi Jan, I'm a d4 player and I don't know how to punish black when he plays early bishop f5 in the slav. I have a feeling you do, Oscar. I mean d4, d5, c4, c6, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, bishop f5. That's very bad. Then I play cd5, correct. But what should be my plans and moves after cd5, queen b3 and knight d5? There you go. Plans I would have given a little speech, but you threw in a little moves there. So that... Makes me a lot less moody. 
Um, well, the main point is that after CD, which is a move you want to play, Queen B3 sort of overloads black, targeting both these pawns. You can't go Queen B6 because of Knight takes D5, and therefore you really don't have a good move here. Maybe Bishop C8 is the best move. After B6, there's some computer wins with some direct E4 business. But you can also just develop the pieces, go bishop f4 or whatnot, and white is much, much better with the weakened mm. black kingside. But e4 is also winning by force if you are in computer mode, stuff like that. It's winning for white. Knight takes d5 is just bad on general grounds because, you know, you're giving up the center with nothing to show for it. White could go e3, bishop d3, could go queen b3, or I think I'd probably play knight d2, just to prepare e4, go for it next move. And white is seriously better. So, yeah, don't expect this to happen a lot in your games, but I think that's all the knowledge you will ever need about early bishop f5s. Hmm, Sadi101 says, Hi Jan, I'm a d4 player and I don't know how to play against the a6 slav. First variation, d4, d5, c4, c6, e3, knight f6, knight c3, a6, knight f3, b5. And now a move 6, either 6, c5 or 6, b3. I feel like the move 6, c5 is overextending and the move 6, b3 is over passive. So you can't, you can't make a move there without overdoing something. Which variation of these two do you prefer? I prefer 6b3. I'll go for the overpassive one. And can you explain the strategic ideas between those two variations? Nah. On the other hand, I saw a game by Kasparov against Morozevich where he played on move 5, queen c2, b5, b3, bishop g4, knight g2, knight bd7, knight f4. What do you think of this variation? And which variation of the three do you prefer? Thank you for your time. So hang on. First you ask me which variation of these two do you prefer, and then which of the three? Would be very confusing if I first said, of the two I prefer 6b3, but of the three I prefer 6c5, right? So in a way, it's a choice between my answer for question one and this new option you just gave me. Hmm. So, what was this? d4, d5, c4, c6, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, a6, sorry, I think you gave a different move order, but it doesn't matter for our purposes, e3. I probably play bishop f5 here, which transposes to the last question, actually. Uh, but b5, I think black is in some trouble nowadays after b3 here, bishop g4. Once again, I struggle with ideas and stuff, but Levon had some nice game with queen d2 against Swidler, this was a nice opening idea. Unpinning, preparing knight e5. It turns out that in these bishop f3, gf positions, white seems a little better. People have also, they've tried all kinds of moves here. a4 has recently been played by Matlakov, also seemed like to be getting a little edge. So they are coming up with some fresh ideas here. These c5 lines, yeah, I never understood either. Like, it's not overextending. It's actually quite interesting. Grabbing of space. That's too complicated for me either. A lot of lines after knight bd7 or g6, but I never know what to do either. So the other line was what? Knight c3, e3, a6, queen c2. Yeah, here I think b5 is a bit of a mistake, and you're not very likely to face that. People will play e6 or g6 in this position. g6 because with the queen on c2, it's added center to, you know, prepare bishop f5 in some lines at least. And e6 also with the queen committed to c2, e6, knight f3, c5, as opposed to more or less equal as. Well, yeah, if I knew that my opponent would play b5, then I think this is the best of the choices you gave me. But I have a feeling they won't. Knight e2, knight bd7. Here, even like the simpleton way to play should be better for white. Mm -hmm. Stuff like this. So that one I'd be very happy with, but I would guess I wouldn't get it. Because after queen c2, e6 or g6 will be played. I sometimes do this with white, but that's the danger or the line you have to deal with. All right, anybody still awake out there? Like we should include some, I don't know, some funny cat videos every half hour to, to keep people awake up, right? 
some lol cats. Oh look, he's a cat and he likes to eat hamburgers. Or look, he's a cat and he can't spell. So he spells hamburgers with a Z, stuff like that. Or drunk people doing stuff. Uh, no, I feel like we need ways to spice up this program. And but McMole is saying, Hi Jan, I have a question about the Vienna with 6H6, which was employed by Aronian in last year's World Cup. Mm. Final. The way Aronian played it in the second game seemed quite convincing. Yeah, but Ding Liren just mixed up the move order early on. But I have a feeling White could have posed more problems. Indeed. For see I said indeed the Trump Trumpian, isn't it? Indeed. For example, with rook eighty one, knight c six, a three, bishop b seven, bishop d three, with a typical attack component, including knight g three, queen e four, and e four, h four, in some order. Black can probably defend with the timely g six and bishop e eight, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Me neither. Do you consider this whole line to be too risky for black in practice, or could this be a viable alternative to the Vienna mainline? Are there other serious ways to challenge black setup? And as endgames tend to be quite good for black in this line, I'm tempted to give it a try. Thanks in advance. I really appreciate your work for chess week four. Thanks, Mac Mole. Yeah, I think you've pretty much said everything. I agree with everything you said. It's a very risky line. If you look at it move by move with a computer for enough time, you might be able to survive. But it's nothing I would seek out with black. So... Um, yeah, I probably won't play it. I'm not sure if I got the move order right here, but I had this. In the file, this queen e2, bishop d7, rook fd1, I believe, is fine. But here, after knight c6, Ding Liren just went wrong with knight g3, after which Liren played very well and was better immediately. But I think even a3 here, bishop e7, bishop d3. It's not going to be much fun. As you said, you have to go for it's very gruesome passive defense against the typical knight g3, queen e4, h4 business. And I, I wouldn't dare to do it. Still, if you are willing to spend enough time here, I'm sure this is tenable, and I'm sure Levon did his homework before they or he or they decided to do this. But yeah, I don't like it. Then more questions. Rob C X N L. Was that Portuguese? My Portuguese is not that great, so I'm gonna have to do some guessing here. Como faccio? That probably means how do I do it? Pra jogar, pra jogar, to play in India the Ray, that's King's Indian, to play a King's Indian against Peolo de Dama, that's the Queen's Pawn. So your question is, how do I play the Queen, King's Indian against the Queen's Pawn? And good news is, you can do that, sir. I'm not sure what the question is, but mainly just do it. This is what we call the King's Indian. And you can do it against the move 1d4, which is the Queen's Pawn. Mm -hmm. Smithy Q is saying... Hi Jan! Oh, come on, are you serious? Give me a break already with the accelerated dragon Marochi structures. I'm terrible at the black side of the Marochi blind type structures. Everybody is, because they're bad. Stop playing them. Sorry, I'm losing it. We're three hours in. I can't take it anymore. White pawns on c4 and e4. No d pawn against the black c pawn. Yeah, I know Marochi. I don't know how to become active, or uh, if I do become active, there's usually a large position of concession. Yeah, because there's no pawn breaks. These positions can happen in the Sicilian, of course, but also the 65 King's Indian is where it allows black to try on d4. This is a magical English. Why plays an early d4 in e4 and perhaps others? Is there any easy plan for black to follow in such positions? Or said another way, how should black approach those these types of positions? Thanks. Avoid them. That's how black should approach them. If you insist on playing them, I can refer you to the three earlier times. We talked about this in today's show, the setup that E3 Zaga plays in the main line with E6, Bishop E5. Seems like the best black can get, but of course there's many other problems with early knight C2s, early rook B1s and so on. So my advice is, don't do it. Let's see if we get another question on the Accelerated Dragon. Oh no, we get someone who has me, an old weird picture of mine, as his profile pic. Even better, 
Sachin Roy saying, Jan the man. First of all, thank you for your for the excellent video series, commentary, panto blitzes, and the numerous other hours of what I call instructive comedy that you bless us with on a weekly basis. Thank you for that. Thank you, Sachin Roy. And now my question is regarding a line of the Spanish that Anna played against So in the Gashimov Memorial a few years ago. It was a very normal Spanish up until 9A3. I like that you say the Spanish and then you start with 9A3, but do not worry, I know which game you're talking about. 9A3, knight b8, knight g5, knight c6, bishop a2, knight d4, knight e2, takes, queen e2, h6, f4 by Vichy. Double question mark now, that was some good homework by Vichy. Wesley took the piece simply and sort of got outplayed. Yep, but what happens if he first took e4? I've tried to analyze it both with an engine and without. And e4 is simply much better for black. All right. Black can probably take on f7 when the rook for two pieces, or white has to play knight a3, and after g5, it just looks. Black just looks to simply be pawn up and have a decent attack. Do you think that f4 was simply one game punt by Vichy and no one is likely to play it again? Or is it a blazing novelty that requires further analysis and might become popular at the top level eventually? Thanks. Um, well, if black really was much better after f4, it was is unlikely to become popular at the top level, isn't it? But Vichy, not, Vichy normally does his homework well, so I don't think things are so simple. The line you're talking about is this, right? Knight b8. Sorry, knight b8 here. Now let me go back so people know how we get there. 6d3, b5, d6, a3, castle, knight b8. And knight g5, I'm not so sure if knight g5 is here to stay. Quite as many other options, of course. Knight e2, bishop e3, a3. Uh, you name it. A lot of legal moves here, a4, whatever. But knight g5, interesting stuff. This, I guess, was a sort of a one game thing by Vichy. But it's not stupid. And if Vichy does something like f4 here, and normally... I'm guessing this is still homework, but I'm not sure. But he won't just miss e4. I'm in trouble. The thing is, after e4, knight f3, I believe, is the correct move. You gotta go g5 to hang on to the pawn. And now, if you look at the position, maybe the, you can fire up your engine again. After g3, fg, either hg, h4, or my favorite, knight to d4. You just look at this, even without an engine. This looks scary for black, doesn't it? Knight f5, king exposed. Um, I'm not so sure black is better here. Maybe a computer can survive this, but over the board, I would not want to face Vichy or anybody. But prepared Vichy would be pretty high on my list for not wanting to play this against in this position. So I don't think he was just bluffing. I think this is scary business. Therefore, yeah, I don't think this line is around to stay. It's a bit too specific. This knight b8 is not popular and then knight g5 and so on. But I think it looks like excellent one game homework and it was a very nice game by Vichy if I recall correctly. <laughs> Cat Ulf Anderson is saying, Dear Jan, I would like to thank you for your series on the Nimzo Indian. I found it very instructive. Thank you. Anyway, I have a doubt. On the Rubinstein's mainline, Carpo Variation, you claim that after 95, uh, Kremnik's move, uh, elegant solution, you say, quote, only black can be better. As a matter of fact, with 17 bishop f6, white forces a draw after gf, queen g4, king h8, queen h4, f5, queen f6, and draws. Did I miss something? All the best. And thanks for your wonderful work. No, you're absolutely correct. So you're correcting my wording, I guess? I, I can't remember what I said. But it's very possible I said something like, only black can be better. Pro I guess I meant only black can be matter better if white doesn't go for the forced draw. Which... Yeah, apologies. I did not mean to mislead you. It's part of most of my black repertoires, or most people's black repertoires if you play main lines. But once in a while, white will be able to force a draw. And I guess, I don't think I claimed, tried to claim that it's not there. But <laughs> as usual, I can't remember. My point must be that only black can be better if the game continues, but you're right that white can force a draw here. Um, so, yeah, sorry about that. Or I'm not sure what the doubt was. I don't think it, if that's the biggest problem with the repertoire, the white can force a draw in that line. We're still doing all right. 
Prism Mike is saying, hi. So I started studying your great series on the Nimzo and David Anton's Queen, Queen's Indian series. And my question is, after d4, knight f6, if white does not play to c4, can I still go e6 and go for an Indian structure? Or should I just go for 2 d5? Thanks, Prism Mike. Well, I did a whole video series on all the sidelines. So my answer would be, it depends as usual. But for repertoire purposes, if you want to play the Nemzo and the Queen's Indian, and after knight f3, you should start with e6 and not with d5, because d5, c4 would take you out of your repertoire. So in this position, you, st you should start with e6, which, yeah, allows white some bonus options like bishop g5 or bishop f4 that I didn't cover in my series because I am I was basing it on the move to d5. But if you want to play the Queen's Indian, then yeah. I guess you should start with e6 here. Can you start with b6? I guess you could start with b6 as well. Not sure if that has any pluses against bishop g5 lines. Just crossed my mind. Might be an idea too. Mm. K Praba 54 is saying, I would like to have your views on Scandinavian with the line Queen D6, which is played by Tivyakov regularly. Can you do a video on that? Nah, I can't. I don't think it's very good. But I also haven't and I'm not planning to spend time on it really. <laughs> But I can certainly put it on the board. <clears throat> is it played by TV Yakov regularly? How many games does he have in the last, like, let's say, three years with his line? Uh -huh. So the thing is, yeah, this looks goofy as Scandinavians do. But the logic is that Scan the Scandinavian opening, not Scandinavian people, just to be clear. But the logic is that the 9c3 is a bit misplaced as well. A lot on how the game will go. Depends on Black's next move here. In my book, it's more of a surprise weapon. I think Magnus played it once against Karana, maybe. And occasionally it will pop up. But I don't think it's a solution to all of Black's problems. I believe white players start figuring out that they can give a bit of time back in many lines and try to reshuffle this knight. You have to g6, knight b5. I'm not sure if it has to be done immediately, but this plan is often quite effective. Go knight b5, c3. Stabilize the center and then bring the knight back around towards e5. And why is just better? Because black lacks pawn breaks. Mm. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of this queen d6, but I also have to admit, I haven't spent a lot of time on it. Kusev Chatterjee is saying, Hey Jan, there was a survey in the New Chess yearbook about the English openings Karpov system. It goes like this. C4, E5, G3, Knight, C6, Bishop, G2, Bishop, C5, Knight, C3, D6. And now the idea being E3, A6, Knight, G2, Bishop, A7. Mm, that's the Vallejo system. Paco, I think he was the first to play this. <coughs> and now whatever white plays, play 7, H5. This has recently become somewhat of a trend, and I was hoping that you could give a direction to fight for an advantage. Maybe after 7, A3, H5. Also, do you prefer the 2 knight c3 or the 2 g3 move order? Um, <clears throat> I prefer, even though I have done both and I'll probably keep doing both. Currently I probably go knight c3 because g3 c6 is a bit of an issue. But doesn't matter for our purposes here in the Vallejo system. I recently won a nice game up. Maybe it wasn't published. It was a German Cup. However, I know the answer. The answer is not to go knight g2, but to play knight f3. Why is better? Believe it or not, black doesn't have time for his usual setup because after bishop a7, we'll go d4. Here after knight g7, d5. The end games are better for white. So this is sort of ruining black's cute little plan of going a6, bishop a7, h5 and get a sharp position. And it's trouble. My game was against Grandmaster Schlosser. I think he took here and I took back with the knight. I checked it afterwards and ed4 also is very pleasant for white. So I was sort of regretting that. But even after knight takes d4, white has a stable little advantage with no risk. So yeah, knight f3. Knight f3 is often better than knight e2. 
And that is what I would recommend if you face this move order. Mm -hmm. Rest in pieces is saying, Jan, what's your take on the Petrov? What's black aiming for? What's white's best try? Black aims to exchange the central pawns and thereby equalize white's best try. I would not know, it varies. I would like to refer to you to my little speech earlier. I do not know how white gets an advantage against the Petrov. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think that's mainly the answer. Knight c3 has been neutralized, so they're back to trying stuff with d4. But then the problem is that after d5, bishop d3, which is the main line, black has like five different moves, as I talked about earlier. You gotta be ready for all of those. A lot of work. Life is very tough. Mm, F. Poir is saying, Hi, Jan, what's your take on the Slav in a must win situation for black? Thanks for your good work. All these must-win situations, where do you guys run into those? Like, most <laughs> most dudes only play the occasional league game, right? It's always uh, th down 3-4 again. But how do I know that when I choose my second move? Anyway, yeah, I probably wouldn't play the Slav in a must-win situation. Even though I've always argued that even the Slav, like if your opponent really wants to play for a draw, depends on the level, but of course at the highest levels there's drawish lines in all the main openings. And on the other hand, if he really wants to go for this, you can probably generate some play even here. Like, even if you just, you know, just go along with everything. They would probably play something like this. You go bishop e7, castle, try making something happen on the queen side. I would be reasonably optimistic in this position if my opponent was playing exclusively for a draw. But yeah, in a must win, maybe don't play this slav. If your opponent is also in a must-draw mode, if he's not and he will play his normal stuff, then you normally want to play the opening you know best. And if that's the Slav, by all means, go with it. Crispy Ambulance is saying, Hi Jan, what is the current state of play in the Marshall d4, d5, c4, c6, knight c3, e6, e4? Um... I don't know, to be honest. We have a video series on it, right, by Sopico. So I'd like to refer you to that video series that I believe is the most recent material published on the Marshall. The, the thing about this move order, this triangle, is it's a useful tool if you're a semi-slav player and you don't want to deal with the Catalan or with whatever, whatever move order you choose, there will be something that can be annoying like this stuff if you choose this move order or if you go for the d4 knight f6 c4 e6 move order then after knight c3 you have an issue and so on and so forth so i've dabbled with this move order quite a bit but you're always sort of bluffing because i was always very afraid of e4 and you better be very booked up in these lines but for details since i'm not up to date I want to refer you to Sopico's video series, which is probably the best info you can get out there on bishop a5 or bishop d6. Those were the lines I was scared of in my days. And Ham is asking, Hi Jan, what is your recommendation against 1c4? Go e5, grab some space. What is the main difference between 1e5 and knight f6 with intention of responding to 2 knight c3 with e5? I can answer that. Basically, yeah, your reply to 1c4 should depend on you, the rest of your repertoire. If you're. Whatever, you're a Queen's Gambit Nimza player, then there's a lot to be said for e6, knight f6. Mm -hmm. But in a vacuum, I would probably go e5. I consider that to be the most logical move, grabbing space in the center. C4 allows us to do that. The difference between 1 knight f6 followed by e5 and 1 e5 directly. So after c4 e5, why can play g3, thereby not allowing all the systems based on bishop b4 and being willing to exchange this bishop for the knight on c3. Now, if you start with knight f6, white can still go g3, but then black has the very reliable system c6 followed by d5, which most white players don't want to allow. 
Therefore, they go to knight c3, now you go e5, and you have opened up an additional set of systems that are solid mainline systems based on bishop b4. That only makes sense after white committed to the move knight to c3. Hope that answers your question. I'm sorry for my impatient tone, it has nothing to do with you guys or your questions. Just getting tired. We're, what, three hours in? Opening clinics, they take too long. I should probably just take 10 questions, make it a 45 minute show. Then again, then we have to do a lot of those to get through it. Sea Eagle is saying, Hi Jan, first I want to thank you for the great work you put in this website. This, I think it's really awesome. Thank you so much. Now to my question. In the main line of the King's Indian Petrosian variation, after the moves d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, knight f3 castles, bishop e2, e5, d5, a5, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, knight a6, knight d2. You reached the position of my interest. Your choice of moves has piqued my interest, sir. In the following moves, white normally, normally white plays a3, b3 and castles, while black plays queen e8, bishop d7, knight h7. Is there any difference about the move order, or can I play these moves in any order with no doubt? There's one obvious difference that I'm sure you're not referring to. But since you've asked the question, you've phrased the question that way, I... Oops, oops, oops. I'm gonna have to address it. So, this business. Only thing I really know, I once looked at bishop e3 here after this Kremlin game, which I thought was very interesting. One game try. This bishop h4 lines, they never really attracted me. But yeah, you asked queen e8, bishop d7, knight h7, which order can I play them in? And I would say probably don't start with knight h7, because then they will take your queen. So, there's that. If you want to start with bishop d7 or queen e8, doesn't matter. If you start with queen e8, there might be an extra option of take some bishop g4, but it looks dumb. So I wouldn't worry about that. And nothing wrong with starting with bishop d7, followed by queen e8 either. So yeah, you can do those in any order that does not blunder the queen. Is my very wise answer. Mm -hmm. Hmm, more questions. By the way, I have the chat open. Sometimes I see some questions there. Two points. First of all, I'm only answering questions that were posted below the news article. We are already three hours in and I'm not through those questions. So I'm not taking fresh, qu fre fresh questions from the chat. Secondly, I see a lot of non-premium questions there. I can't answer those either in the news article or the chat this is. One of the ways we're trying to give back a little something to the premium members that help supporting this site, that only they can ask questions. But of course, anybody can watch me slowly losing my mind, which is a premium and non-premium pleasure. Bluesy is saying, hi Jan, I'm struggling finding a solid answer as black against the following move order in this Ratey Catalan kind of setup. M6B3, this is exactly the same question I've answered earlier. So I'm still, I'm gonna have to refer you to that answer. I'd still go b6. Sounds like one day I might have to, I don't really want to, but I might have to do it. Fill in the blanks video series on all this business here. Hmm. <clears throat> oh yeah, b6 as I mentioned, I'm also struggling with b5, but b6, bishop b2, bishop b7. Seems to be in decent shape these days. Rob Hein is saying, Hi Jan, I'm a chess noob and you are to blame for my new hobby. Sorry to hear that Rob Hein. Get out while you still can. Love the content. I have a generic question. I have trouble getting out of the opening at parity. Then I fare better. I see. I'm the other way around. I'm very good in the opening, but then I fare worse. I'm reading and I've watched some opening vids on Chess24. They explain opening theory in terms of lines and permutations, which is overwhelming. GM's rattle of notation, if they play b3, you must play f6. But the reason is not evident to me. I'd like to understand the theory, the why. 
come to the wrong place. I'm not about the why. I'm he goes here, I go there. Can you recommend a resource or training approach to extract this hidden knowledge? Or is this just how it is? Might slightly depend on your approach to chess, but I, yeah, I'll always argue that chess is a concrete game. Of course, we're all following general principles. Occupy the center, develop your pieces, get your king into safety, and bishops are stronger than knights, stuff like that. But it's very much a concrete game. And the more you think about concrete situations, the more your pattern recognition and your instincts for the why will improve. It's not about memorizing moves and these, um, memorizing all these moves that GMs rattle off, but it is often a concrete game where, or to me it is, where I go here, he goes there, and there's no overlying theory and principles that you can apply, at least not consciously, to get the answers. Having said all that, I think Vichy Anand, former world champion, did a bunch of excellent videos on opening principles and business like that where maybe you can get more of an overlying theory or getting started with why we do the stuff we do in the openings. He's also saying, also, can I suggest a stipulation banter blitz with Swidler where he is forbidden from using the adverbs particularly and quite appreciated? Um, generally speaking, that's objectively a good idea, but in this particular case, I'm not quite sure he'll be able to do it. Um, we're just happy to get any Peter Swidler banter blitzes. And stay tuned for his new video series on the best games of 2017. Some delays, but it's coming out soon. Smyslo Vasily is saying, Hi Jan, first I want to thank you a lot for your instructive video series, especially the repertoire for Black after 1d4 and against the Italian. It helped me quite a lot. I have just two general questions. Are you planning to do a series on knight f3 and 1d4, I'm guessing you mean 1c4, with all the transpositions to the Catalan? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess I might have to wonder. It's not high on my to-do list, but it would be logical to round out this four part 1d4 series to also add the repertoire or add a consistent repertoire against one knight f3 and one c4. Many of the questions regarding that are the ones we're seeing today. Uh, so yeah, I guess I shall one day. <laughs> you can see, I'm very excited about it. Having watched these opening videos, I'm still struggling with remembering all the lines. What do you do to remember opening theory? I don't. No one does, no one can remember all the lines. It's also connected to the question we had earlier. What I do is I prefer I prepare for games. So if I have a tournament game, I will prepare for it. I will look up what my opponent is likely to do, and then I will use the resources at my disposal, be it videos or ebooks or my own files, or people that might know something about it, to prepare for certain lines. But no one has all this knowledge available at all times, unless they're some memory freaks, but I certainly don't. Still, I believe that it benefits a lot to watch it and get a general idea. But yeah, if you ask me details, even from my own video series on Move 18, I will fail that test normally if I haven't prepared. Assassin in white is saying, Hey Jan, what players do you recommend to follow in Chebanenko Slav? I don't know, who plays Chebanenko Slav? Andrei once in a while, right? Are there regulars? It used to be Malachov and Volkov, I'm not sure if they're still around that often. Um, I don't know, I'm sorry. I'm not sure it has a many dedicated followers, the Chebanenko Slav. If you have time, I also want to know if white have aggressive setups in exchange Slav, and what are they if they do exist? I'm sorry, that's too general a question. Um, yeah, I don't get it. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm pro-exchange Slav, but it's not necessarily the place where you would start looking for aggressive setups after going for the exchange Slav. I don't think it's a legit line, but aggressive setups depends too much on your definition. So I'm not sure I can help you there. Hmm. Like I, 
Yeah, I don't know what that means. If you play it for a win, does that mean it's an aggressive setup? Or can you play some very dull technically technical position and still be aggressive because you want to win it? I don't know. This is generally regarded the more aggressive approach in the exchange left to delay knight f3. But I'm not even sure I agree with that. I think we have a later question about um, aggressive bishop g5 in the exchange level. I just saw something. Not sure. First of all, let's see if... Oh, there's more questions about the accelerated dragon. I thought, what happened? Why is no one asking me about that? Ah, but this one is about the hyper accelerated dragon. Nicholas Kung 5 saying, Dear Jan, I'm currently reading a book on the hyper accelerated dragon. Is that what this is coming from? Is there some book that all you guys have been reading and you thought, we must ask questions about the accelerated dragon? Saying, because I'm not fully satisfied with the author's recommendations about C against c3 lines, I've come up with the following idea. Against 2c3, c3, c3, as well as the moral gambit. E4, C5, C3, G6, D4, CD, CD, D5, E5. E5 looks harmless. Disagree with that point, by the way. And now the very rare A6, the engine's first choice. Yeah, it looks a bit random. Stops Bishop B5, but also sort of loses a tempo. And prepares Knight C6. If White plays Knight F3, which he shouldn't, after, for example, Knight C3, Knight C6, I want to play Bishop G4, Knight H6 to F5, and otherwise follow up with an early F6. Do you think I can get away with the shortcut or are there major problems? Thanks. I don't know, maybe you can get away with it, but it doesn't sound very good. No offense, because yeah, I think it's good that you thought for your own solution and there it certainly makes sense, but I think there's some problems. First of all, after d5, ed, the best you can do is probably knight f6, when these positions are not a walk in the park necessarily. This Knight c3, bishop g7, bishop c4 positions, or queen to b3, followed by... Mm -hmm. um, this stuff might be playable, but I wouldn't rule it out as completely harmless. Even though, yeah, I, I'm i not saying it's unplayable. So after e5, you want a6, knight c3, knight c6, and here, yeah, white shouldn't go knight f3, bishop g4. But instead, I would like bishop e2. And it looks like... Eh, could be a bit of a problem, no? So, yeah, I don't know, this doesn't look like a great setup to me, to be perfectly frank. <clears throat> Iyer Baboon is wondering, Hi Jan, I was wondering about what to do against a dreaded Dutch defense. Just be happy your opponent play 1f5, no? What else is there? Um, is 2 bishop g5, a, how playable is 2 bishop g5? Yeah, I think 2 bishop g5 is alright. If we're talking sidelines, I'm probably more of a two knight c3 guy. But nothing wrong with two bishop g5 either. Now you get a lot of these weird positions after g6 where you have to decide what to do. When these direct approaches with e4 don't seem to yield all that much. So normally they play some weird combination of e3, h4, which is not really my brand of chess, but I do believe those are very playable for white. Um, yeah, what else is there? H6, I always thought white was better. Even bishop d2 was interesting. But these lines as well, how does this go? Mm -hmm. Stuff like this, right? I don't know, I always like white here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, two bishop g5 is all right. I'm normally not doing it because of g6 and because of the Dutch, nothing wrong with the main lines, but I think two bishop g5, perfectly acceptable move. Ooh, this is a tough name for me to pronounce the next question by Gretschu96. He's saying, hi Jan, what about exchange Slav with four bishop g5, which lately became fashionable? I had some troubles with that as black. Yeah, it caught my attention. The thing is, though, that this might sound strange, but I believe it only makes sense if after knight c3, black goes knight c6. Well, 
in almost all the mainlands you want to go both knight c6 and knight f6 so it doesn't really make that big a difference but here after knight c6 bishop g5 is interesting i'm not saying it's winning but grisha got a good position against carlson here after knight f6 bishop f6 and there's some weird other lines like f6 e4 where black can probably hold but they look like a lot of fun so yeah it makes sense but my point is if you start with knight f6 i don't really see what to do because bishop g5 now knight e4 seems good this is the typical thing where this bishop could be a liability and after e3 you would lose it so what do they do they go a3 queen d5 bishop h4 here giri played e3 even knight c6 seemed to be equalizing so my point is it looks interesting after knight c6 even though I guess black equalizer if he knows what he's doing here in these f6, bishop d2, e5, or e4, e5 situations. But if you start with knight f6, then it doesn't look that interesting. Mm -hmm. How far in are we? I'm, <clears throat> I'm getting tired, boys and girls. If you haven't realized, then my, my very short, raspy voice answers over the last hour. Keep it, sir. Is... Um, answering to an earlier question, um, we did gave knight d7 instead of knight f6. Uh, find the wife frequently plays knight f3 and only after knight d7, e6, then h4, etc. My question here we are is whether black after knight f3, e6 needs to worry about. 795 to exchange the black square bishop for the knight and retain the KB king's bishop. Pillsbury von Popiel, Munich 1900. Which century are you from, Kibitzer? You're using terms like KB king's bishop. You're calling Pillsbury games from 1900? Very old school. Continue bishop d6. Yeah, bishop d6 looks a bit dumb. And knight g6 and white 1. Of course, Pillsbury was much stronger than his opponent. Instead, I might play knight d7 here. Yeah, that's what everybody does. Um, Modern Masters is why I don't seem to choose knight e5, however. Yep. Maybe they think that after knight g6, h3, black may use one of the h file, which is more important than the bishop pair. What is your opinion, please? My opinion is that black is fine. <clears throat> How was this? Here, 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 here. Knight f3, e6, knight e5. I, I like my two bishops, but this is yeah, not a great version. First of all, black has the ideal pawn formation with pawns on light squares. But the big thing is th this knight is a little clumsy on g3 and all these structures. And why we'll have to waste time to repair that. If black manages to get in whatever, like knight f6, bishop d6, queen c7, and white gets stuck with this knight on g3, this can be a great inconvenience. And yeah, I don't know what white would do here. Some passive SF like 92 g3 maybe bishop d3 typically you can also go c5 very quickly so no i don't think this is scary at all with black and i would not play like this with white like my bishops but this is a bit of an exception here the white bishops don't have anything great to do it's not in g3 it's very silly hmm. gior is saying in your London system video you gave a line d4 knight f6 bishop f4 d5 e3 c5 c3 knight c6 knight d2 e6 knight f3 cd e d knight h5 why do we have to exchange bishops before pawns no why do we have to exchange pawns before playing knight h5 giving white the e3 square for his bishop mm. interesting question but i believe i know the answer how do we get there doesn't matter d4 d5 <laughs> this line cd the point is after cd why does he decide how he's going to recapture and i believe after cd we're not going knight h5 right or maybe we are and then queen b6 but if i recall correctly after cd i wanted to play queen b6 and then keep this option of knight h5 in reserve well if we were to start with knight h5 white would probably go bishop g5 
um, where after f6 he will go bishop h4 after cd. Ed would make a lot of sense now because then our setup is nice with this knight having access to the f4 square. But here white would go cd, which looks a bit inconvenient in this knight h5 f6 combination. Not ideal. Not sure how bad it is. Maybe even this is playable after g6, but I wouldn't be thrilled about it. Therefore, it's stronger to go cd first, as I said. After cd, we go queen b6, keeping this plan in mind. And after ed, knight h5, <clears throat> this bishop does gain access to this square. It's more important that white is committed to this. And this line, I'm sure I gave more stuff. Seemed fine for black to me. Mm -hmm. I hope that made sense. Chess Daniel 24, let's hope he makes sense too. No pressure. Dear Jan, I followed your Catalan video in and in a rapid game. White gave the pawn. After c6, knight c3, bishop g6, with knight e5, queen d4, followed by bishop f4, and had an easy game. I lost a lot of time to find good moves and in the end the game. Could you recommend something? Love your inspirations and work. Sorry to hear that, Chess Daniel. But I'm gonna have to ask, are you sure you followed my video? Are you sure? <laughs> because I am reasonably sure. The line we're talking about is this a6, queen c4, b5, right? Queen c2, bishop b7, bishop d2, bishop e4, queen c1, c6. And judging from the position you gave, it looked like the move order was knight c3, bishop g6, knight e5. Queen d4, bishop f4, which I agree, it looks dangerous for black. But I'm 99% sure that in this position I gave bishop takes f3 and queen takes d4. Did I not? I'm reasonably sure I did. Which I stand by, which I think is fine for black. So, details matter in these positions. That's why I always struggle with plans, plans versus zombies, because it's chess is very move by move in all this stuff. And after knight c3, yeah, you gotta take here. Then take here and you'll be fine. Well, after bishop g6, you're probably not fine. There is a bunch of lines, different lines, where we go bishop g6, but this is not the position. Here, for example, after rook d1, black goes knight b7, knight c3, and now we go bishop g6. But now after knight e5, we can take and go knight d5. So it is very different if you catch my drift. And therefore, yeah, follow me more closely, not literally. But I believe that is the culprit there, Chess Daniel. Glass Pound Spiel saying, Hi Jan, are you still thinking about creating a video series on the Ragozin in the future? Um, I don't know, to be honest, it's an opening that interests me, but I'm, I would start very much from scratch. I'm still thinking about it because the, I did this four part, part series against 1d4. And I'm reasonably confident in the longevity of three of the parts. But the Vienna, I always felt like I, and maybe the viewers one day, would need an alternative. And the Ragozin would be an obvious choice. I don't know anything about it, so I can't promise if it's coming or if it's coming soon. Um, but yeah, it's a project I might tackle in the future. Not sure yet. If not, can you recommend a book as a starting point to learn that opening? I can't. I haven't read a single book on the Ragozin. I don't know. Sorry. But I'm sure you can Google what's out there. I honestly have no clue. Mamamu Ededu is saying, Hi Jan, I aspire to play slow and lifeless positions. Finally, somebody to my liking. I've heard that there is a small advantage for white in the exchange slav by not playing an early knight f3, but instead knight g2. And that sounds like a strange grapevine you might have heard that through. What squares should I consider putting my queen on? How do I overcome my fears of g5 starting an attack when I have no pieces on the queen side? You mean king side, right? I don't know, man. Sounds like you have issues. No offense. Like, like unnatural fear of running into g5. I'm not quite sure what we're talking about as usual. And it's always much easier for me. If you give me a position or a move order or something, then more cryptic ideas like putting the knight on e2 instead of f3. I don't know many lines where I would put the knight on e2 in the in the exchange slav. 
And I certainly can't think of any positions here where the knight goes to e2 and then black goes g5. I also don't know where you would want to put the queen. Sorry, I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Maybe a line like this, a6, bishop d3, bishop g4, knight g2. I don't think there's any g5s looming here. This line does exist. Not sure why it's better, but I've seen stuff like this. Your queen, I don't know where it goes. Typically b3 if it ever goes anywhere. But I don't know what the theory is. My best guess is we would hurry up to play. Something like rook c1, knight a4, knight c5. Queen b3 could be on the agenda. But yeah, too cryptic for me once again. I'm sorry, guys. I really struggle with them concepts. <clears throat> Turfan Fragment is asking, how can I, as a Grunfeld and Nidorf player, as black, maximize my chances of achieving a familiar position against one knight f3? You should play one knight f3. Mm, c5. Then, if they go e4, boom! Nidorf in the house. If they go c4, which is more likely, then you go knight f6, knight c3, and you play d5. And if they take and play d4, then you go boom, boom. Grunfeld, we did it! I believe that is a consistent move order with the rest of your repertoire, even though you're still running a bit of a risk not to run into literally the Grunfeld or Nidorf. But it's a consistent move order to play as a Grunfeld and Nidorf player. Right, last question, at least on my list here, by Panther Chess. He's saying, hi Jan, I play with black, normally the French defense, but now I will change, because my results with this are not so good, and I've heard that you don't prefer this opening. Yeah, that's true, but I'm, I'm not going as far as saying it's a bad opening. I don't play it, but I wouldn't call it bad necessarily. What do you think is another strong opening against e4 without many theory and clear plans for a player with David Set circa 1600? Mm. Well, I've made my dislike for plans and so on. Clear already, I'm more of a... I go here, you go there, player. My general ranking of opening goes like this. White goes e4. The best two moves are e5 and c5, fighting for central squares. Um, e5, yeah, you can play all the main lines. I'm advocating you can play the Petra, even though that's probably not a sexy line to play. Um, c5, I'd go with the Knight of or the Taimanov as the backbone. Then there's c6 and e6, probably more or less. Hmm at the same altitude. They allow white to occupy the center, but at least we challenge it immediately with 2d5. So if you're playing the French and you want to change, maybe c6 for you. Similar structures, there's a new video series out by Shelling Ford. I like it better than the French. What else do you want? Then tier number three is d6 and g6 and d5, which are sort of playable, but I'm not. A big fan. G6 and D6 you normally see by strong players if they are playing for a win. Um, and D5 you normally see by mm, Scandinavian players. That's about it. So in your particular case maybe C6 makes some sense. But I would mm, play E5 or C5 which are my main choices. I don't know. Those are, those are your options. Just find some, maybe some repertoire series you're happy with, and then have a look how it goes. Hang on, I'm getting directions from our boy Colin here, and he tells me, oh, there's only one more question if I refresh. I can do one more, I guess, can't I? In case you're still alive. I've given up a long time ago. <clears throat> Let's see what Hukyu has in store. He's saying, hi Jan, I sometimes try to avoid the Benoni. With d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, c5, g3. And try to get the lines with queen c7 and the pawn sack on c4. I hear you, but those lines aren't great for white either, are they? But many b black players go more aggressive way with cd94, d5, bishop g2, e5. 
Is there a clever way to retreat this knight, or should I avoid this line completely with white? Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I've come around to avoiding it completely, because I'm never that happy with the queen c7 lines either. I could never spot. I've played these things quite a bit over the years, but I could never really spot a way to play for an edge here. Mm -hmm. Or in the line you're giving. And since that's two lines, I thought it's too much. After d5, bishop g2, e5. Yeah, I sometimes dabble with looking at knight c2 and d4, f4, stuff like that. At least, at least it leads to fresh positions. But I don't think white is an edge. And yeah, in the old main line with knight f3, d4, castles, knight c6, e3, whatever, bishop e7. I believe black is fine as well. So yeah, I've struggled finding anything here. Um, my way to avoid it, not saying that leads to anything, of course, but I've always felt more comfortable starting with knight c3 here, when at least the queen c7 lines don't make oh, that much sense anymore, because here yeah, we can go e4 if we want to. And if they go d5, that's actually a legit system. It's not bad, but why are some other options like bishop f4 or c takes d, knight takes d5, bishop d2. So that's what I've been doing. But of course it opens a different can of worms, as we always do. Like there's knight c6 here, which is less effective after g3. But sorry, yeah, I could never find an edge in these g3, c, d, knight, d4, either d5 or queen c7 positions. So I gave up at some point. All right, I think we're done. I wish I had some more questions about the accelerated dragon. Like what can you do against these seven bishop c4, bishop b3 systems or how to play actively in the Marochi bind. But it seems like that was not a priority today. So <clears throat> zero questions about the Italian, zero questions about the Queen's Indian, I guess, therefore Either my video series were so good that they left zero open questions, or no one's watched them, or both. Could still both be true. In that case, watch them and then don't ask anything because I answered all your questions. Thank you for anybody who's crazy or bored enough to make it through the however long I've been talking, three and a half hours of this opening clinic. Apologies for the tech issues in the beginning. I hope this show went fluently. I'm sorry, I can no longer sit still or straight. But I guess that's it. Go premium if you want to ask me a question in the next show or if you want to have access to all the great video series that I've been referencing or play me or many other grandmasters and tight players in Bento Blitz. Of course, you get also get access to the full functionality of the good old chess24.com. And you keep the lights burning in this lovely studio. That's it for today. Sorry for falling asleep for the last, nah, maybe three hours. I think I was really on fire in the first half hour. So check that out. Maybe don't. See you guys next time. Bye.